Hello, good evening, and welcome to the far side of the galaxy for the first episode of Black Void Into the Oblivious Depths. I am your game master, Colin. Colinomicon on the internet, but please, just call me Colin. It's shorter. Uh, and I am joined tonight by a wonderful cast of role players who are going to be coming along with us on this journey into the oblivious depths. The, the oblivious depths here being the darkness of the void and all that lies beyond it. I am so incredibly stoked uh, <laughs> to have uh, these, these people with me. They're incredibly awesome. I have been just buzzing about this... Uh, about this campaign beginning ever since, well, ever since I found out I was going to do it, but also uh, ever since we did, especially since we did our session zero, I've just been like geeking out um, <laughs> about, oh, I don't know, they had such great ideas um, and they've just, they've gotten me so incredibly excited to see, uh, to just kind of see them strut their stuff on the galactic scale, if you will, and they will. But before we get into the depths of space. I got a few sponsors I need to tell you about uh, here on Weave the Tale. We have been truly blessed with a great lineup of sponsors for this uh, season. Uh, one of which being, get a load of this, Black Void Games, who make this very game that we are about to play, Black Void Games. Uh, and it's wonderful uh, creator, Christopher Sebeldson, who wrote this game, who I've gotten to talk to, interviewed him on this channel, actually, uh, and is just a super nice dude, and it, it has made this wonderful, wonderful game that is about to facilitate this wonderful journey we're about to go on. Uh, also sponsored by Evil Hat Productions, one of my personal favorite uh, TTRPG companies out there. Uh, one killer thing about them, this is not in the sponsor copy, but this is personal experience. Uh, Evil Hat Productions has a uh, PDF guarantee. So if you buy a hard copy of their game, if you just email them the receipt showing that you bought it, they will give you a free PDF. No, no questions asked. As long as you bought it from a nice, friendly local game store. They are super nice like that. I just did it for the game that I played with Stella a couple weeks ago. We played Aegon. I got Aegon from Evil Hat by showing them a receipt from a, uh, from a uh, local game store. They were all about it. We are also sponsored by Christopher Gray, the creator of The Great American Witch, which we have here on Weave the Tale on Mondays, GM'd by the wonderful Lydia, half Hours Hermit. Christopher Gray also made one of my favorite Powered by the Apocalypse games, which is called The Happiest Apocalypse on Earth, which is a horror game set in a hellish Disney world. And it's awesome. <laughs> it's an evil Disney Great world game. called Mouse Park. That sounds fun. It's, that sounds It's fun. dope as hell and you should all so I, play it i won't say mm -hmm. that i am a former cast member and i will not say that i know other former class members and i will not say that we had a great time ironically playing that game because none of those things happened but it was so what um, will you say Liv? a ton of fun <laughs> um you should check i will game. say you and I, <laughs> I will say you and i should talk about this after the stream is over because <laughs> i too let me Florida. tell you <laughs> And I will say that we are also sponsored by Smunchy Games, as well as Broken Dice, uh, Mighty Narwhal Games, Arcana Media, sorry, uh, Arcana Media, we have to work on my pronunciation there. Um, please check out all these awesome games, these awesome companies. They allow us to do all the things that we do here. Uh, and also we are sponsored uh, by uh, Grinding Coffee, uh, a black LGBTQ plus owned business. Uh, that actually has been cool enough to uh, set us up a little coupon code. So if you want to get some kick-ass coffee uh, mailed to your house, all you got to do is go to grindingcoffee.com and use the discount code PENNY for a tail. Get yourself a little discount on some sweet coffee. So that is uh, sponsors out of the way. Do not forget also that during the show, we have our retweet goals and our sub goals. I just went over this in tunnel, but just so y'all remember... We, every time we get uh, 20 retweets, then 30, then 40, etc., 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 you will unlock, alternatively, a boon or a bane. I will do something really nice, or I'll be a total dick to the cast and make something bad happen. Alternatively, uh, I am open to your suggestions. So when we hit that retweet goal, chat. If you want to get chatty and drop something in there that you'd like to see happen, hit me up. I am open to suggestions. 
can't promise I'll do everything, but I if something sounds cool, I'm all about it. We also have our sub goals. Every five subs, you will unlock a story event or uh, a help all. Give something nice for everybody. Uh, so, that's that. I have uh, talked too much, so I'm going to shut up for a moment, and then I'm going to talk a lot more. But, uh, as I said, I'm Colin. I am your arbiter, as it is known in the Black Void system. Um, but I am not uh, the... Uh, I am not the most important here by a country or a galactic mile or by a parsec. I am uh, joined by an incredible cast, and I'd like to introduce all of them right now. As we go around, please let the folks know who you are. Uh, and who are you going to be playing in Black Void and the Oblivious Depths? And I'm going to start uh, up at the top right with one of my dear friends and someone I just can't get away from these days, my buddy Wally, Wally132. How you doing, man? How are you doing? It feels like it's this weird uh, feeling of like serendipity that we are forever to cross paths. I think that's what it is. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, the, there's some emanations from the void or warping space and time, and we're yeah, I'm totally forever in each other's totally business. I'm here for it, buddy. I'm, I'm always happy yeah. to play with you. What's <laughs> up, so, y'all? It's your boy, Wally. Um, I am playing, go by he, him pronouns myself. I am playing, <clears throat> I'm playing Oshan. He, him pronouns. Uh, Oshan is a half blood shark person. Uh, that's the best way to describe him. Yeah. Half blood shark person. A warrior with a code of ethic, a man who believes in philosophy and art, is just as powerful as the sword itself. Yes. What is the... So this is not uh, canon to Black Void. Um, this is our little invention. When I say our, I mean Wally's. I didn't do this. <laughs> <laughs> what is the... Uh, there is no option for shark people. Um there isn't we, uh, at all. We, so Wally made that up, and I love it. I totally so what did made you call it up. I, I called them silicacians uh, silica because, you know, the species sub... Yes, because the species subset for sharks are silicacimorpha. So I called them silicacians. Yes, silicacian. I love it. Um, hey, everyone can add a little something to the world. I think that's just the beautiful thing of TTRPGs. And so Wally has, and I'm totally here for his contribution. So we have uh, my friend Wally playing Oshan the Shark Man. Down below Wally, we have Stella. Good evening, Stella. How are you? Hello, hello. I am doing well. Thank you. Uh, today I will be playing Yara, she, her pronouns. Uh, Yara is also um, a half blood, she is half lizard person, half human. She has very, very large, almost anime-esque eyes. They are very beady. And uh, she has weird chameleon skin. I do love the weird chameleon skin. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be lots of shenanigans with that. Yeah. Yeah, so I mentioned at the top of the stream that um, our cast here, are, uh, our, our characters rather, are human mostly? Uh, not, there's a little bit of, they're all a little, they're all at least partially human, uh, but they've all, for the most part, taken on some new and interesting attributes, and, uh, yeah, uh, we have Shark Purse, and then, uh, Stella here, as Yara, decided to go more lizard, chameleon, and it's super cool. Um, all right, cool. And then down uh, to Yara Stella's left is Liv. How you doing, Liv? Hi, I'm doing well. Only slightly nervous, but mainly excited. Um, my name is Liv. I go by she, her, um, and I will be playing Sanha. So we've got land. We've got sea. But are you ready for sky? Because Sanha is half bird. <laughs> <laughs> We got it all here, folks. We got it all, <laughs> Sanha baby. Is... Yep. Uh, Sanha is <laughs> half a uh, human, half, I could say bird. The actual term is a uh, column. They are a race yep. of bird people. Um, so she's got, you know, <clears throat> she's all kind of like one color. She's got feathers for hair. She's got like the kind of weird legs that bend and stuff. Um, 
and you know she's um she is a force as some people would describe her so that's how she likes to describe herself mm, yes a force of flight uh well no she can't fly actually um but no, she is, yeah, so she's she, a little sensitive about that. She's a little sensitive. <laughs> Do not, <laughs> As I think, don't bring up the flying thing. Don't bring up the flying thing. Don't bring up the fact that she doesn't have a beak. Like, just... She's yeah, just a sensitive. human with feathers. They're very sensitive. And I'm not sensitive. Yeah, I'm not very that's, sensitive. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm stronger than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is, uh, she is half column, uh, which is... Uh, very important. We'll, we'll talk about Colum quite a bit in just a, a little while. They are kind of central to our little story here. Uh, but they are, yeah, they are sentient bird people, the humanoid height of average human, big, huge beaks, tiny little wings on the back. They're basically vestigial and useless, um, but very advanced, uh, very advanced civilization of aliens. And uh, yes, yeah, Sana is uh, half in that culture and half human as well uh, as is a sort of common theme running through a lot of folks here uh but there is one human mostly in the group more a higher percentage of human than the rest and that would be zohar played by anna nymeria 941 anna how you doing and tell the folks about zohar Hey everybody, I'm Anna, Nymeria941 online and in Discord and all stuff like that. A higher percentage of human than most is something no one has ever accused me of before, but that is indeed <laughs> who I'm playing today. Um, I will be playing Zohar, whom I have lovingly dubbed the Void Mom. Uh, she is a Void-marked character who has had an encounter with the titular Black Void, which traditionally does not end very well for people, but she survived it with a little extra things left intact afterwards. But, you know, she's just here to figure out what everybody's uh, favorite food is aboard our spaceship and cook us some dinner and have a really good time. Yeah. We're yeah. all a so zoo she is... and she's our keeper. <laughs> That's yeah, kind distressingly of. accurate. Yeah, yeah a that's little the best bit. way to Am I a Pokemon it? trainer? <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. No, because make I don't fall, take orders you? from you. <laughs> that's true. That's that's Sana, true. Sana that's used true. sass. It's super effective. Uh, I need have, to yeah, that's so my new Twitter bio. Enough. Thank you, Colin. <laughs> You're welcome. You don't have enough gym badges to control me. <laughs> yeah, fair. So yeah, Zohar is needs um, more milk with honey in it, it's fine. Z Zohar is is all human. Plus a little extra in there. Yep. You're like 110%. You got, there's a little, little sum of sum from the void that has yep. snuck also, in there. Will. Little souvenir, if you yeah. will. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's a way to look at it. A little leftover. Okay. So with all that in mind, let us begin. <clears throat> we begin with a simple story of four humans. Again, mostly. Four humans, atypical humans, one might say, that live under atypical circumstances. First of all, these humans do not live on Earth, but of course, very few do anymore. It's now outside of living memory when the cataclysm happened, when suddenly the skies above ancient Babylon were rent open and massive black tornadoes miles wide descended down from the sky, sucking humans up into the void, scattering them all across the stars. There are still relics from those days. There are still the odd statue or a piece of pottery, maybe a sword, but there's no one left alive who remembers it. Humans were sent far from their home, into the depths of the galaxy. Many of them landed at the eternal city of Lin, the center of this galactic civilization where so many different alien species come together in a confederation and where humans have scraped out a living essentially as refugees in this uh, great sprawling metropolis. But not all 
humans are far and wide, and as humans have interacted with other alien species, they have, though not possessing the technology themselves, been able to benefit from the technology of void faring. Now the void, what do we mean when we say the void? We do not mean space. That's mundane. That's much too simple. The void is not space. It is not the blackness of the vacuum. It is not space, it is the space between spaces. It is everywhere and nowhere. It is everything and it is nothing. It is timeless, and yet time seems to stop there. It is a contradiction in every sense. It does not compute to the sentient mind. At least, not a sentient mind born of this plane. The Void is... The closest way to describe it would be a, a parallel dimension of sorts. It is another world, but it exists atop ours, subsumed within it. They are inextricably linked, and yet they are irretrievably different, contraposed. To get across such vast, uh, such vast distances in space, you can't simply hop in a ship turn the engine up real hot, and eventually make it there. It's not how it works. The only way to do that is through the void. To enter into a tear in the fabric of reality that takes you through the void and drops you off somewhere else. These void tears, some are more stable than others. Some are charted and navigated. Some are known quantities. We know that if we enter here, we exit there. Some are not. They range in size from a pinprick to the size of, of an entire world. They are scattered all over space. You may not even know you've passed through one until you're already on the other side. Or it may swallow you and everything you hold dear whole and deposit you somewhere in the irretrievable oblivious depths of the void things in the void don't make sense people were not meant to see the void but some humans have some alien species of course have there are things that come from the void there are creatures native to the void that enter into our world interact and then return and over time the sentient species of the galaxy have learned how to utilize the void and now finally so have humans now humans don't have the capability to travel the void themselves but for the right amount of coin and maybe with just a tiny smidgen of goodwill they can hitch a ride and some humans have before us now we have four who have done exactly that if not them then their ancestors at some point rent from earth brought to the other side of space and time, and now, having traveled through the void, have landed on a little planet called Aniar. Aniar is the home world of the Column, these sentient bird-like creatures with their massive beaks and small vestigial wings. It is their core planet from which their massive federation stretches all across space. Most humans that live on Aniar are not integrated at all into Column society. They are, of course, as I said, refugees. They may work and interact with them, but primarily in subservient roles. They are not their equals, as the Column are concerned, but they do tolerate them. They allow them to reside on their planet. But there is a bit of hope now for those humans, because the one thing that the Column are very, very well known for is their ability to create the finest void-faring vessels in all of the known world. These void ships are highly prized. And the Column are nothing if not business people who are willing to negotiate. Therefore, for the right amount of money, 
they will fund an expedition. They will allow other species to essentially rent their ships to go out and chart new worlds. The column benefit from this as well. They gain information about these uncharted worlds that may or may not harbor, harbor sentient life, that may have valuable resources, and they sell that information to the highest bid. As it happens, the humans from back in the Kima district of the city of Lynn have worked up just enough goodwill and enough money to fund one such expedition. And so the column organized as the Todd Consortium, a family run business that organizes void faring expeditions has put out a call for four humans or mostly humans to join an expedition and go traveling off into space their mission as requested from their human uh, clients is to find a new world for humanity humanity has no home anymore but with a bit of luck a hell of a lot of hard work and just some stupid bravery four humans have been offered the chance to find somewhere for humanity to call home. This expedition has been organized on the Todd Consortium's homeworld, the Column homeworld, of Aniar. The call went out, locals came, humans came from other planets, all gathered here to put their name in the hat to be on this expedition. The training and the screening process has been brutal. It has been months of intensive training with military-like rigor, beating the rules into everyone's heads, exposing them to void emanations to see if they can survive the effects, exposing them to, uh, exposing them to high G-forces to see if their bodies can maintain it, and also the nothingness of space to see if they atrophy after a short amount of time. Many of these would-be recruits have perished. But that was always known. There now remains just a handful as the Todd Consortium narrows down who will be the four who will go on this expedition. And we begin with the final phase of that proving ground. It's not a... Uh, not exactly a grueling uh, obstacle course. This isn't Marine Boot Camp. Actually, this begins in something much more... Mm, humble. <laughs> a simple waiting room. The four of you, as well as several others, are seated in a waiting room at the Todd Consortium... Uh, the Todd Consortium complex on Aniar. The buildings that the column build... Um, look a bit like giant anthills. Uh, they're rounded, made of earthen materials with round windows and round doors, but they are built exceptionally so that even though these are earthen mounds, they grow to the size of skyscrapers. Their cities look like massive sprawling molehills, literal mountains made of molehills that take up entire miles. But this small one sits by a lake, some pristine landscape, rolling arid hills that you can see through the windows. The four of you have been told to sit and wait until your name is called. This is the interview stage. The final questioning to see if you have the mental wherewithal to withstand the void and enter into this expedition. With you in the room are the last remaining recruits who have survived the grueling training you've all just undergone. Some are friends, some are adversaries, some you really don't know. But in this moment, the one thing they all have in common is they're all competition. And before we begin in earnest, I just want to say thank you to everybody 
for one, hitting a retweet goal. That will already earn a boon for everyone. That is noted. I will get that in a moment. We've also hit two sub goals. I want to thank you to one, our cast member, Anna, right here, who immediately blitzed the sub goal before the show even started. So thank you. And then, did you do it again? Or did... Oh, we have... Oh, and it, and then Wally went and... Okay. <laughs> so that's two uh, sub goals. All right. For those two sub goals, uh, everyone will receive a help all. You can see they have little crits up in the corner of their windows there. Um, we're going to get you all another one of those. You'll be able to use these uh, to force um, to force rerolls when if you are dissatisfied with the outcome of a roll. Reminder to everybody: this is a D12 based system rather than a D20, but 12s and ones are still crits. So things tend to swing pretty wildly from uh, success to failure. So we have two crits for everybody, and we have a boon coming up just as soon as I think of something. Anyhow, the four of you are seated in this waiting room. You have, you not have, you have not been forced to sit in silence. You're allowed to talk. Um, but the nerves in the room are high. There is an electric kind of buzz. You can see your fellow recruits, all human to varying degrees. Uh, you can see some of their legs shaking, rubbing their hands, twiddling their thumbs, nervously scrawling things on bits of paper and on tablets. It's all come down to this. The four of you are seated, Yara, next to her friend, Sana. Zohar, sitting across from her newer friend, Oshan. All within a short distance of each other. And you hear the door at the end of the room click open. And a column emerge a tall creature red of skin with a kind of golden beak many piercings uh, up around his ears big rings uh, wearing these flowing blue bright blue robes who steps out peeks his head out just a bit and says Vash you're up next and a very handsome Adonis of a dude stands up. Bright blonde hair that is short cropped and kind of combed back and this bronzed god complexion and gleaming green eyes stands up, looks around at everybody and makes direct eye contact with Yara. a bit of nervousness in his eyes and his mouth moves mm. as if he's trying to say something but just noises come out what do you do oh um i think yara is very uh distracted she is probably sitting very close to sanha Going, I believe we should review our notes. We want to make sure we have everything. Oh, gosh. Um, do you have the last chapter with you? I can't remember the manual. I don't know where it went. I've been reading it too much. The second that this dude starts looking over at the two of them, Sanha is completely ignoring Yara and is staring this dude down. <laughs> Just absolutely glaring at him. Doesn't I think say Yara anything like to her. <clears throat> She stops as she notices that your attention goes elsewhere, and she looks and follows your gaze. And her skin is kind of scaly, kind of lizard-like, and she literally starts to turn purple. <laughs> what are you getting nervous about, Yara? You only do that when you're nervous. I... 
It's him. Who? I don't see if anybody have mark or note around, so who is he? You're right. Spit it out. Never mind. No, no, it, I see no one. I don't see anyone. It, I see notes, and she just kind of like buries her nose into her clipboard. He, You're gonna be fine. You don't need to go for your notes. Hearing Sana's unsubtle shade, uh, he looks down and just kind of gives like a rueful sort of smile, just like, okay. And walks toward the door, shoulders back, chest out, triumphantly into the room. The column pats him on the back and leads him in to the room. You know that these interviews take a few minutes, it seems, uh, and he'll likely be in there for the next little bit. But you've also noticed that you don't see anyone. There's been a few that have come and gone into the room. No one has come back out. They all seem to be exiting through some other way. So he goes in. And as he leaves, he gives a look back over his shoulder. Again to Yara. And winks. For closing the door behind him. <laughs> Yara just starts like burying herself behind her book and she just starts like trilling like <sighs> very uncomfortable. Sanha is staring at Yara but she does not say anything. She just shrugs, <clears throat> shifts in her seat and just keeps staring and looking and waiting. If Yara wants to say something about it, she will. Yara will not say anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> then there's nothing to talk about, is there? Nope. Sitting to the left of Sana, but to the right of Oshan, is a young man, human entirely, uh, 100%, who you've all gotten to know uh, decently well in the time that you've uh, that you've been in training. He's a nice kid. Young, probably not cut out for this, but to your great uh, surprise, has performed quite well um, despite his constant nerves, uh, always believing that he's a failure, always thinking that he's doing it wrong. Uh, his name is Marduk, and he has been sort of the breakout star for a lot of people uh, here. But even now, at the end of all things, he is sitting next to Sana, next to Oshan, and he is rocking back and forth. He looks to Sana, smiles, and then looks back down. And then turn can suddenly, stop? like, with a You're snap of his neck. You're rattling my chair. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, just, can you okay, stop ahead, rattling ahead. my chair? Thank you. Yeah. He stops instantly. Like, grabs the arms of his chair and, like, holds himself steady. Sorry. Sorry. That's better. His neck snaps to the left, like, in a sudden burst, and just turns to Oshan and says, What do you think they're talking about? What do you mean? What do you think they're talking about? It's an interview. They're not talking about anything. They're asking people questions and we're supposed to answer them. Close your okay, eyes. Okay, but like... Close your eyes. Okay. Listen to your heart for a second. Listen to the rhythmic beating of the heart going through your chest. And let it go through your body. Focus your breathing. I can't... I can't he hear my heart. Can you? Uh, Oshan cracks an eye open and looks over at him, which is like a black Wally looking eye. <laughs> yes, I can hear your heartbeat. It is very, very loud. Um, he like 
kind of sheepishly puts his hands over his chest, like trying to muffle the sound a little bit. Like, sorry, sorry, my heart's loud. I, I didn't know Just that. Relax I didn't know it was loud. Just relax yourself. You made it this far. If you, if you don't make it, consider it a goal that you made it this far. Not many of us have can have what it takes to make it through this rigorous ordeal and training. Consider yourself... Consider this a win, even if you don't make it. However, you've been quite the... What's how to put it, but uh, you've been the superstar during all this, so I don't see why any reason you should be nervous. It is surprising. Oh my gosh. What? What? What is surprising, Son? What is surprising? It's simply surprising that he has gotten this far with the lack of skills and will and the shuddering and shivering. Just because someone has surprising. a lack of skills and a lack of will, it doesn't mean they don't have what it takes to make it in this. They definitely don't have what it takes to survive. But nonetheless, surprising, impressive, lucky, they all kind of work for him. Sounds like you just described Yara, ship's your whole entire part, like your entire progress during all of this, surprising and lucky. Um. I would much rather use words like skill, deserved. But go ahead. Oh, I would rather use those words too, skilled and reserved to describe you and your entire process through all of this. I won't, but I probably would. So you admit it, I am extremely talented and I deserve to be here. More so than other people. More so than you. I wouldn't say you don't deserve the spot any less than the rest of us sitting in this room. Or any more than us. Do you guys want me to move? Oh. Do you want to sit next to me? No, you're, you're, no, no, you're no. Fine. God, please you're, you're don't. Totally please do not move. Um, I actually, despite your rattling, very thankful that you are occupying this space between the two of us. Thank you. He looks across the way to Zohar and the empty seat next to her and tries to make eye contact with Zohar and then like look at the oh, empty yeah. chair. She just like pats the chair and is just like, yep, it's open. I'm just gonna. Uh, just gets up and does like a really quick like. His he never even fully straightens out. Just like bends his knees, spins and pivots, and lands his butt right down to the chair next to Zohar. Oh look, Oshan, you scared her me away. Say, oh, I think it was definitely you. Every single time you open your mouth, it's like a cacophony of noise that people want to get away from. Oh, you know, some people just can't handle it. Intimidation, sad. Probably why he won't make it through. If we're being honest here, you do need a certain bit of intimidation in this line of work. And that is something I guess you do have some talent in. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be shy with the compliments. Keep them coming. No, that's it. That's all I had to say about you. And I wouldn't even call that a compliment. It was more of a light observation that I decided to say out loud. Well, then he I leans. see no need to thank you. <laughs> he leans. He turns the button. He wants to say whispers. something in retort. And he's like, no. He just goes back to being quiet. He leans. <laughs> he leans next to Zohar and whispers. They're, they're both like really mean, but in different ways. It's scary. You're not wrong, but, uh, you don't have anything to be afraid of from those two. Get a good heart, kid. Having a loud heart's way loud better heart. than the alternative. Yeah, it's better than okay. having a quiet one. Yeah, see? 
I mean, you think anybody no, here expected to actually make it all the way through into this room? I no, didn't, of course that's not. for sure. Of course not. Do you have, um, do you have, like, a snack or something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would pull out from the, uh, little bandolier type, uh, thing that I have around my, my chest. I've got, like, a little pouch that's got probably, like, some almonds or other type of tree nuts or things like that. And it's kind of, like, at first struggling to sort of untie the things the tips of her fingers are kind of like metallic and, and clinky um but then yeah it just passes it over here you go don't eat Space him too mom fast. always has a snack in her purse yeah. <laughs> oh thanks and he does eat them way too fast uh, just like crunches it's, down hard on these gonna be hard on your stomach but it's okay it means you're ready i haven't eaten all day so this is I mean, thank you thanks Zohar. Mm -hmm. <sighs> aren't you nervous oh yeah i'm always nervous I tell. really mm -hmm. you've literally never looked nervous to me about anything ever Yeah. Maybe it's glasses hiding it. I don't know. That's that's probably it. <sighs> so why do you want to go on this thing? Shoes. Why do I want to go? I Yeah. If I said You mean like, if I said because I have nowhere else to go, would that sound too bleak? I hope not, because that's why I'm here. Really? Just as he says, really, the door opens up and that column steps out again. Yara? You're up. Good luck, sweetie. You've got this hand immediately. Remember, you are. Grab... Sana. Yeah. yeah, Sana takes your hand. Yara, you are by far the most intelligent person I've ever met. You're extremely capable, and we will be fine. We will both be fine. Now go. Show them. Okay. Just because you said so. She'll let go and straighten her papers on her clipboard and slowly approach the column. The column has a wide, gleaming, beaky smile. Seems to be trying to, to put you at ease. And he says, no, it's all right. Just a few, this will only take a few minutes, just... A few, a few quick questions and you'd be on your way. Just need to cover a few bases. All right? Okay. Yes. Of course. Fascinating. Wonderful. Okay. All right, right this way. He leads you into a room. Here's a short hallway. And then another door at the end. Which he opens, and the first thing you see upon him opening the door is a large desk made of this sort of, uh, th this wood that's uh, native to Aniar, but it is this sort of, it looks like driftwood, sort of a rounded but a bluish color, um, beautiful desk with these big curved, very organic looking legs. Big, wide, beautiful piece, and sitting behind it, is a column that you have never met personally, but you know immediately who it is. Because you've seen this guy's picture on the walls 
throughout the Tot Consortium. This is Ka Lakune Kutad, the head of the Tot Consortium, the El Jefe of this whole thing. This is one of the most important and one of the richest people, certainly on Ani, probably the richest person on Aniar, and one of the richest people in the galaxy, and one of the largest movers and power makers out there. By leading these expeditions, this person, uh, Kailakuni Kutad, is uh, a kingmaker. And he smiles and uh, unlaces his fingers and says, Yara, please, sit. As she's coming up, she whispers under her breath and says, Oh, my stars, he knows my name. Oh, um, she has, she kind of turns this purplish shade again, and she has these frills that kind of look like long spines on a lionfish, and they usually lay flat against the back of her head. She also has no hair, by the way. Um, and hmm. they kind of stand up a little, bristling. This is her um, alternate sense that she has. Basically, it's like a pressure, kind of threatening kind of sense that she gets. Much like a prey might bristle when they're afraid. And uh, she approaches. And as you approach, you realize that you've been so fixated on Kalakune Kutad sitting feet away from you that you didn't notice yet that there's someone else sitting at the desk. There's an empty chair at the front of the desk, and to its right, Vash still sits there. And Kalakune uh, waves to the other column and says, We'll just be a few minutes. Uh, just wait outside. Yes, sir. And the column shuts the door behind him. And Kalakune crosses his fingers. Please, don't be nervous, Yara. Just a few simple questions. I understand that you two know each other. Vash is looking toward the window, not making eye contact with you. Yara looked at him for a split second, identified him, and then immediately just honed in on Kalkakune Katad instead. Is that so? Yes, we were... In university together. It's not my business for any personal reasons. I am not interested in any of your dirty laundry. However, I need to know in the event that both of you were selected for this mission. How would you feel about that? And Vash turns his neck, looks at Kalakune, and looks at you. Clearly nervous about what you're about to say. <laughs> well, discipline comes first, the mission comes first. Always, we will do whatever is in means of Surviving and uh, keeping up the reputation of the Cod. Todd. 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 Consortium. Todd. She Todd. stutters. Yeah. Huh. That's good to hear. And Vash, again, his lips quiver as if he's trying to say something. Yes, Vash. Is there something you'd like to add? No, sir. I think Yara said it well. 
the mission comes first. Hmm. Yara, how would you describe your relationship with Vashnir? Yara turns purple again, and her bristles just stand up further. She says, mm. Mm. Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Vash? I would agree with Yara's assessment. It's uncomfortable. Yara, why is your relationship with Vash uncomfortable? We were romantically entangled. And then I broke up with him because he's an asshole. Excuse me, that's really not proper. Vash, I did not ask for your input. Vash crosses his hands and folds his hands between his knees and makes himself very small. Sir, it's much more complicated than that. We... We had a tumultuous relationship, and... I don't necessarily agree with Yara's assessment that she's the one that broke it off. I think it was more of a uh, more of a mutual kind of thing in the end. I think we all had our reasons here. Um... <clears throat> but again, none of this matters because it will not get in the way of the mission. Mm. So even with your uncomfortable relationship, Yara, you are confident that if the two of you were crewed together, it would not be an issue. Nor would, and I'm sorry to have to ask, but nor would there be any prospect of a future romance as fraternization between crewmates is strictly forbidden. <laughs> she just starts laughing. She says, oh, no, 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 no. There is no chance. No way. No way. Not... Not even a... Excuse me, no. why? That's a bit rude. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, I agree. No chance. Not a chance. No way. No hope in the void. Good, good, good. Yara, I have just one last question. Yes? If I were to, if you were me, and you had to pick just one of you, who would you pick? Between me and Vosh. That's right. Well, I would surmise it depends on a number of parameters. What kind of mission is it specifically? Do you need someone with brute force, or do you need someone with a strategic mind? I, uh, definitely cannot assist with the first, but the second... You've seen my scores. I'm... well studied. Indeed you are. Vash? He looks to Kalakune and then to you. I would pick Yara. Really? Yes. She's more than capable. You need somebody clever. She's much more clever than I. And you see... Actually, you know what we're gonna do? Oh no. <laughs> oh boy. 
Our first ever roll. Roll an awareness test. So roll a d12 and add your awareness bonus. Okay. Awareness. Three. It's a plus zero. So one d12 plus zero, right? Yes. Four. That ain't great. You have reroll tokens. <laughs> also. Yeah. You have those rerolls if you want to use them. Hmm. I'll use a reroll token. All right. One down. Oh, yes. Eleven. Eleven. Very good. You catch the slightest little smirk on Vash's stupid fucking face. And you realize... This is his way that he thinks that this fake show of humility will get him the spot. He thinks that you're being tested and that if he pretends to do the honorable thing and vouch for you, it will get him picked. You know this guy pretty well and this is exactly the kind of shit that he does. Yara doesn't say anything. She takes a note of it. She says nothing. She looks down at her papers and reshuffles them again. You see Kalakune takes a note. Okay. Thank you both for taking the time to talk with me. Vash, uh, there's a door to my left. Please exit through there. Yara, there's a door to my right. Please exit through there. Thank you, illustrious one, for your time and assessment. Yara <laughs> illustrious bows one. nervously. <laughs> yes, yeah. and she skirts out the door. She skitters away like a bunny rabbit. Vash leaves first through the door to the left and the door shuts behind him he struts away with confidence again shoulders back chest held high head up that same stupid smirk the door shuts behind him and as you go to leave Kyla Kune offhandedly raises a hand and says and congratulations Yara or what? Hmm? Oh, that's the door to the briefing room you're about to go through. That's the exit. He's heading back to the barracks. You'll be going to the briefing room. Welcome aboard. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And she skitters away <laughs> like a bunny rabbit. The rest of the crew will be joining you shortly. Make yourself at home in the meantime. And you skitter away to the briefing room. Meanwhile, back in the waiting room, Marduk has devoured the space almonds that Zohar gave him. He has seemingly calmed down. He's been in quiet conversation with uh, Zohar this whole time, and Zohar's calm demeanor uh, has been reassuring him. Zohar's been uh, telling him some stories to make him feel better. Zohar, um, what things were you telling Marduk about to take his mind off things? I think I'm telling him just a story about tapping trees in the springtime because that's something that I always like to do. It's something I always like to think about and look forward to. And also, I don't know where this kid's from, but, you know, this is fairly exotic. So, probably not something that he's encountered before. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. 
I think I'm ready. I think I, I think I can do this. Yeah. Thanks, Sohar. Um, whatever happens, it's been really cool getting to know you, and training's been not, you know, like... I mean, it's been real. Um, it hasn't been real fun, but it's been... It's been cool. So, thanks. Yeah, whatever happens back there, just remember none of it was wasted. Yeah. Yeah. I learned some stuff that I might be able to use later on, you know? Okay. All right. I can do this. And just as he says that, the door opens. Marduk, you're up. Oh my god, I can't do this. I can't do this. Oh Go get my him, god. Kid. You're uh, gonna be fine. You'll you'll be fine, Marduk. Just remember. Fifteen minutes of hell and it'll be over really quickly. Control your breathing and you'll do fine. Okay. He stands. Makes an effort to control his breathing. You see he takes a few deep breaths that are not really timed, just like <gasps> He doesn't quite get it there, but he's he's trying. And he walks a little bit of sway. Probably the irregular breathing has made him a little lightheaded. And he reaches the door and goes inside. Here's hoping the best for that kid. Yeah. We all know he's not going to survive, right? Honestly, I don't. I don't think he has what it. I don't think he has what it takes to make it out there. Oh, I wasn't even talking about the mission. I meant the interview. Fair, and yes, he doesn't have what it takes to make it to that interview either. Sweet kid. Honestly, though. I think he either Very will nice. pass out before. He, I think he will pass out after he has the first question is asked to him. Marduk takes all kinds. Marduk is gone through that door not longer than a minute and a half before it opens again. Zohar, your turn. All right. See you later, I guess. He nods to Zohar. The column greets you at the door and leads you, Zohar, right this way, leads you to that same office. And you see just as the door opens and you enter, the door, there are two doors behind the desk. The door to the left is just closing as you enter. And you see, again, someone you've never met, but you know who he is. Kala Kune Kutad, seated at the desk. He respectfully stands as you enter and reaches down and picks something up off the floor and throws it in a little bin, just like it looks like a piece of paper or something. He just chucks in a bin to the left. And he has this look on his face of, wow. Please have a seat, Zohar. Yeah, she will. Were you familiar with the young man that just left? Yeah. Yeah, I knew him. Hopefully I still know him. You didn't need him, did you? He... He picks up something again off the floor, and this time you can see clearly it's a tissue. He, he cries a lot. Um, anyway, thank you for coming in. Just have a few questions and then we'll be on our way. He like flips through his little notebook. Um, so we haven't told you everything, of course, the nature of the mission 
precisely, but suffice it to say that uh, you'll be entering, you'll be doing void travel, which is inherently dangerous. And there is, as with all void travel, a risk of death, a risk of being lost. Uh, all manner of things can go wrong. Now, of course, we have the finest void vessels in the galaxy. We take great care. And our record is very good. But these things can't happen. And I just want to know, first of all, if you're prepared for that sort of eventuality. Maybe a little more prepared than most. Yeah, you could say that. Why would you say that? Mm, because I'm still here. I've seen it. The way you're not the supposed to. The void. Mm-hmm. Yes. That is of interest to me. What are your thoughts on the void, Zohar? Do you fear it? Yes. I think any hmm. reasonable person fears oblivion. Well, if you've seen it, you know it's 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 much more than that, isn't it? So much more. Zohar, you... I'll be honest with you. I am skeptical. We, Column, and please don't take this the wrong way, but we, Column, have been sailing the void for millennia. And we are well acquainted with its operations. And even we struggle with it, witnessing it often does terrible things to the mind. You, with all due respect, are human. You've had your species has as very little exposure to the void in your short time on the galactic stage. And you seem to be, you personally, seem to be highly functional for someone who claims to have witnessed it. What do you have to say to that? I think that uh, functionality would be an asset to this trip. True. It hasn't really brought me many good things in life. This could be good. What has the void brought you then? How sturdy is this room? Reinforced. Yeah. Uh, why do you ask? You have anything valuable in here that you really don't want broken? I rather treasure this desk. Okay. Then I'm gonna back up just in case. And she gets up from the desk, walks all the way to the back of the room, sort of like opposite direction from where the column is. Probably nothing's gonna happen, but there's always a slight chance that it will. What, what are you... Um, what are you trying to, what are you, what are you trying to do, Zohar? Hey, yeah, I feel like now would be a really good time for you to show up. Hello. Hello. 
Are you talking to me? Yeah, hey. It's been a while. Uh, do me a favor and just uh, tell my friend here a little bit about what it is that you are and what you do inside of my head. I don't just do tricks so hard. I... Why don't we show him? Hmm? Let's show him something. Alright. Um... I would like to tap into uh, one of my spheres and I would like to use it to just levitate everything a wee little bit up off of the ground. We'll do that with force. Force, okay. Yeah. Roll a d12, add your willpower. Okay. And I have a plus one because this is something that I have done before. Nothing too terribly fancy. Eleven. Beautiful. This will be fun. A bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of uh, make it all fly. I love to make things fly. Just be gentle ah. with the desk. He really likes it. You are no fun, and you never have been. Away we go, so far. In to the void again, you and I. All we need to do is show this stupid, ignorant being our power. And the desk and the chairs and the column himself begin to float. And not only float, but spin. They twirl around the room. A quick vortex as he from the air says, Okay, that's that's quite enough. You can put me down whenever you're ready. That's I think I understand now. That's very good. Oh, it's something. Let's crush him. I don't think crush him. We don't need him. No. No. One day, you're going to start listening to me, and you're going to love it. Eh. It's been ten years. It hasn't all been bad. She just pops these back on. See you next time. Um... Yeah, um, mm. I figured that this was probably the time to show that off, if there ever was one. So, yeah. You said you had a couple other questions, I think. That was just one. Door to my right, please. That way. Thank you very much for your time. Welcome aboard. Please, please leave. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm walking. <laughs> And you exit through the door. 
in the office, Kyle Lacune scrambles pages around. Some things were tossed in the vortex you just created. And he sees that he has only two two papers left on his desk. Oh, what the hell. The door opens in the waiting room. That column secretary steps through. Oshan, you're up. Oshan uh, stands up, and that's when you notice he is a solid six and a half feet tall. And he leans down, and he picks up this large sword that is that is about his height and he holds it you know close to him nods to sana and heads towards the door and you hear something come from inside the office you hear a shout and the column leans back into the listens oh Sana, you too. Oshan stops dead in his tracks, and the camera's, like, focusing on his face. And you just see him doing this face of, like... Nostrils flare. (laughs) And he continues Uh, walking. (laughs) uh, Sana stands up, fluffs her feathers, uh, holds her chin up high. She is not nearly as tall, but Sure damn well carries herself that way and walks into the room. <clears throat> As before with the others, you are led rather awkwardly side by side down the hallway to this office door that opens and you see there are this office, there are papers scattered across the floor. Uh, there's a tablet that's tossed aside. There are books. There are pens and things tossed about. A filing cabinet's tipped over. One of the chairs is laying on its side. And the column secretary looks at the man behind the desk and says, what happened? And embarrassed, starts picking things up and sorting things, putting them on the desk. And you both see, again, a person you've never met, but know very, very well, as they're extremely famous, Kalakune Kutad, sitting behind the desk, looking very flustered. And looking off, and then doesn't even notice that the two of you have entered. And then he sees the secretary picking things up and sorting things, and he says, don't worry about it, just get the chair. It's fine. Oh, Sean will pick up Please the come chair in. and set it up right. He points to the secretary. Go, leave us, this will be quick. Okay. Are you okay, sir? Excuse me. Um, yes. Thank you. Sana. Looks down at his papers uh, to make sure he got the name right. Sana. Yes. Yes. And Oshan. That is correct. I'm fine. Um, these interviews, you know, it's, it's been a long day. Um, but as we now are at the end of it, now would be a good time to speed things along. So let me just be very frank with the two of you. You two are top of this class. I mean that. Literally, by your marks, you are first and second. Who's first? Sorry, my apologies. I was told that you would ask that. Whoever told you that was correct. Well, clearly I demonstrated it. I'm not going to tell you who's top. Both of you are exceptional candidates. And both of you deserve a spot on this crew. Mm. 
You know there's a butt coming, right? Yes. That's what I'm waiting for. But I have been told by your instructors and by everyone else that I have asked, including your classmates, that the two of you do not play nicely together. Would you say that that's true? Um, I... I would say perhaps that Sean maybe and I have opposing personalities. We have yet, different worldviews. And yet magnets need opposing poles to work together as a unit and oftentimes positives and negatives oil and water can mix sometimes those who uh have these Who's opposing worldviews those opposing worldviews sometimes those opposing worldviews can help for better solutions and arguments <clears throat> Yes. One covers what yes. others lack. Shortcomings. If yes. You it, it is a situation where people will feed off of their flaws and make their put those flaws into the light and show exactly where they cannot succeed at and the other person can catch up and fill in whatever they fall at. It's just, you know, Mr. Roshan fancies himself a martial man, and um, still a sword must be struck to be a sharpened blade. And I like to think that is what I can do. I feel that Sanha, she is amazing at the fact that she can speak her way out of any situation. And she is amazing at... <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, I felt something come up there. <clears throat> I f am surprised that uh, she made it this far on her pure uh, auditory skills alone without That's demonstrating great. her martial skills. And I believe that is a great, a great asset to any crew. Someone who can talk their way out of any situation and Oratory others. skills, leadership skills, high marks, a robust education. She's good at making people human shields. <clears throat> and, you know, there is something to be said about a fantastic human shield. Thank you, Ashan. What a beautiful way to highlight your abilities. Well, I think I've heard all I need to hear. <clears throat> I was going to ask you if you two thought you could work together, but interestingly, you sort of proved it. When you both wanted something, a spot on this crew, you both managed to say something almost nice about each other. So you can set aside your differences. Yes. S suppose we're good at that. Uh, suppose we could set aside our differences once in a while. I am a very, I'm I'm very confident in my abilities, uh, Mr. Todd. I I will not sit here and talk, you know, dance around that. That being said, I'm also very aware of my flaws. And why don't, you, why don't you name a flaw? What, what's, what's one of your flaws? What is one of your flaws? What is one of your flaws? Martial capabilities. Um, uh, see... Last I checked, you were actually very good at you were very good at hand to hand combat. Um, last I checked, so it's obviously not your martial capabilities. I, mean, I you know, I would, I would say that you are better. I would say that you are better. I am. There it is. As you were saying, Mr. Hod. Oh, Sean. Hmm? Yes. For one thing, uh, 
this speaking out of turn is noted for your record, but also, I'd now like to know one of your flaws. One of my flaws is that I am... <clears throat> Don't pick up on social cues. Mm. Oh, really? I don't, I have a little bit of trouble picking up on social cues every now and then, and I suppose that does get me into situations. What what she just did there, O'Shawn, that's sarcasm. The, oh, really, that was, let me just help you a little here. That was, yeah. That's, that's a cue for you. Now. Yes, I'm fully aware of that now. But I suppose because of this flaw I have of the fact that I can't pick up social cues very well, Maybe Sona is a better partner for me in this situation. So you'll make up for each other's weaknesses? Yes. As glaring as they are. Very well. Congratulations to both of you. Welcome aboard. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Two things. Three, actually. Four, actually. One, I'm not going to as, tell you. As many. Nor, nor... <laughs> I have several, <laughs> just you wait. I'm still not going to tell you who's first and who's second. You'll have to work that out between the two of you. You'll have to do that quickly also because your crew is to designate your own crew commander. I don't want this to become blood sport but you will have to decide. Third, I guess that was second, uh, you will have to exit through this door here to the briefing room. The rest of your crew is waiting for you. And finally, that thing you said about magnets, Sana, opposite poles. Um, I'm not terribly versed in your human idioms but I believe the saying is opposites attract. Are um, you? <clears throat> That'll be all. Hmm. I would say. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Todd, for your time mm -hmm. and your opportunity and this opportunity and just everything that the Todd Consortium has done for um, myself and the rest of my class. I, I truly appreciate it. Yes. You're welcome. And it is a pleasure, I must say, from a personal standpoint, to be assisting one like yourself, who is partially of our people. Let me just say it is an honor to do what I can for our people. Yes. Our people. Yes. That way. And... Yes. Yeah. Oh, there will yes. be a there will be a brief celebration to send you off. We will be having a bit of a ball later on, and um, it will be at my estate. I expect you all to come in formal wear. I hope you have some. If not, we'll see what we can do. Take good care, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity. He stands up, goes over to the door, opens the door, waits. For Sanha time. walks through the door. <laughs> yeah. He walks through the door and closes it behind him. Okay, Sanha, let's... I see Yara when I... Uh, oh, yes? Uh, Sanha, I understand this is going to be a moment where... Um, we may get cutthroat, but I believe, don't take this in the wrong way at all whatsoever, what I'm about to say. I think you'd make a great commander. Oh, Sean, I knew that there was a brain in that head of yours. I knew, oh. I just knew that there was something working upstairs. It is not, I, 
believe me, Sana, there is nothing more I would love to not be on this crew with you. However, mm. I believe the only way we'll get through this is if we try to be somewhat civil to each other. Hmm. And well, you I know, feel that I... Good commander always takes care of her crew. So you don't have to worry about that. Thank you, Sanha. I like that. Thank you. And she just leaves. <laughs> and like, as he walks away, you just see Ocean just going. Um, oh. And the second she sees Yara, she runs over and grabs her hands. It's just like, okay, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? Am I ever wrong? So as you enter the room and see and see Yara, you run over, grab her hand, and you snap Yara's attention away from... And this is like a little conference room. There's like a long uh -huh. table, a couple chairs. There are some like snacks and beverages laid out. Um, and Zohar and Yara have been in here the whole time. And it's like one of those horrible fucking... Um, like uh, corporate training videos is just like playing on loop on a screen at the end of the room. So, uh, <laughs> so Zohar and Yara have heard a million goddamn times this <laughs> same exact looping, uh, the same exact looping um, thing that is just, uh, it just keeps saying over and over again, welcome. Welcome to the Todd Consortium. Oops. Welcome to the Todd Consortium. Our purpose is to explore new worlds in the pursuit of resource-laden and abundant worlds to colonize. Our tutoring will help you learn policy and practice in your role as a Todd Consortium Voidfarer. During the final stage of your training, you will be assessed for all of your skills and allocated to a crew based on your abilities. Each crew is assembled to enhance each other's strengths, as well as account for each other's weaknesses. It is our belief that success is built on collective efforts toward our objective. Our goal is to satisfy the needs of our patrons and possibly make the cosmos a more friendly and civilized place, one discovery and one new planet at a time. As you head off into the void for your first mission, please do remember to observe the following rules. Please keep all equipment in its proper location and neatly stored away. You are representing the Todd Consortium at all times. Act accordingly and with tact, and with diplomacy when interacting with any sentient species. Keep to the assigned destination list unless there is an emergency situation. All deviation from the charter must be logged and will be investigated. Specimen collection needs to be done properly and stored away in a sealed room for further study once back at headquarters. Finally, do not allow any unsanctioned persons aboard the vessel or to travel with you at any time. This has been a message from the Todd Consortium. Thank you so much for coming aboard, and we look forward to traveling the void together. And it just keeps looping. And as you burst in the room, like Yara and Zohar are like, like drooling so anyway, up both sides uh, of her mouth. <laughs> Rock in particular, I thought you would like because it's going to have slightly higher saline content, and I know that you really enjoy that. So, here's to potentially colonizing some new worlds and finding new rocks for you to lick. You did good. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All I have in my pockets are these snacks that we've taken from the table, and I have this pen, but I am unfortunately I cannot give you this pen. It's a very special space pen to me. Um, that, oh, that, that's, and then that's as, okay. Uh, and as Sana comes up, Yara like has snacks in her hands, and she says, "Sana, I believe that we need a commander, and we should put it up to a vote. Sana has my vote. Oh, yeah, yeah Sana's got my vote too. I am putting my vote towards Sana also. I'm voting for myself as well, thank you. This is, I'm glad that this is unanimous. Of course you would. <laughs> I mean, I don't it's, know it's why really you're so upset, a... Oshan. I'm agreeing with you. 
It's to say you yeah, can't really... vote for yourself in, a, in an election like this. That's not how it works. Then it, my vote would go to Sohar. Happy? No. Mm -mm. See? See, this is why people say you need to pay attention and read the room. Speaking of reading the room, you then hear a voice come from under the table. Uh, I vote for Sana too. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Oshang uh, leans down to look yeah, under the same. table. <laughs> slightly sideways. I've been sitting here this whole time. Another county. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know who she is, but she sounds pretty cool. Everyone's voting for her, so I'm just gonna go along with well, that. Well, and as, as you lean down, your... you. See, you see a two foot tall dude under the table. Uh, this is an alien species called an Ord. Um, the best way I can describe an Ord, the best way to describe an Ord, I think, is think Fat Yoda. Um, it is a tiny little dude, short limbs, uh, short arms, short legs, a very big round body, um, very thick, green skin, slightly goblin like. Um, but this guy looks old and he's like kind of wrinkled and his face is kind of scrunched up and he's wearing these like seemingly like clothes that looked like they were nice once, like well made, um, but haven't been cleaned in a while. And it's just now that you notice that like the weird smell in this room has been coming from that guy the whole time. There's this kind of crusty mildewy smell, uh, that's just been there. It's like mildewy mixed with like strong scent of like burning herbs. And he just looks up. Um, I think it was uh, Zohar leans down um, and he just goes, Hey, yeah, I've been here the whole time. What's going on? When you say the whole time, do you mean like they forgot about you in here? Yeah, people do that. Are you? you know, I get lost. I'm small. I mean, so, you can stand at the table if you want, but we have food if you're hungry. Oh, I mean, I kind of liked it. You know, like this little like roof over my head. You made me feel kind of safe. It was nice. But, uh, oh, we got snacks? I'm kind of hungry. Yeah, all right. Yeah. He climbs up on a chair and climbs and stands on the table. So, oh, space almonds. Right on. Cool. Space almonds. Space almonds. <laughs> Spalmonds, if you will. He's clearly not from this planet. Spalmonds. We're just called almonds here, but don't make a big deal about it. It's fine. So, so uh, uh, I'm so hard. Okay, so Is you're Yara. not the one. Who did I vote? Who did I vote for? I said Sonic. That one. Sonic. Hey, I don't know you, but you look like a good commander. Yeah, got a good vibe about Thank you. you. Sana. Thank you. How perceptive. Should I change yeah, my vote? Yeah. You voted for Zohar. Should I also vote for Zohar? No, 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 no. no, no. You voted perfectly. You, you, you made well, the right Well, then it's a tie. Choice. Wait, no, I voted too. So mm. I'm commander. I mean, and as your commander, we're um, okay as long as I don't vote for myself. Like, do we have? We're still missing one. So, like, do we have quorum? I don't know what quorum means. Is that what quorum means? I don't know quorum. Uh, refers to enough people to have a vote, and if this is a group of six and we have five out of six people, then yes, we do have quorum. See, that's okay, well, I'm still voting. I'm still voting for you. I'm still voting for you because you know what quorum means, and I think that you need that in the commander. Yeah. Thank you. Who are you? Oh yeah, sorry. I'm Weha. 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 And you yeah, yeah. do what? Oh man, I'm your navigator. Yeah. Yep. You're the He's navigator. Tell us where to go. Oh yeah, best in the business. Been oh. sailing the void for centuries. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Weha. I'm Oshan, and he hails a hand out to him. Centuries. That's correct. Mm. I like the way that one feels, man. Tight. We're gonna be friends. Nux. Nux. And he pounds it. <laughs> Ow. Ooh. 
That's a big fist. Okay. <laughs> and you are our navigator. So... Yeah. Yep. Oh. So wait, how... you said you've been traveling the void for centuries, as in you've been exposed to the void for centuries. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they're still letting you take ships out? Yeah, hey, void exposure does stuff to your brain, but, uh... No, I'm aware. Yeah, but hey, there's, um, there's always ways to, to fix it, man. I found, you know, I've got some medicinal remedies that really help, so... I'm also here to take care of y'all, you know, like, the void, it can get a little, it can get a little weird. So, you know, I'm, I'm here to, I'm, I am a support for all of you, and I, I'm happy to, to help, uh with everything I can to make sure you get through it okay. Just, I guess, like, first and foremost, like, like, don't look out the windows. Like, do not look out the windows. Like, ever. Tight. Alright. Seriously, don't. You don't want that. I, I wasn't planning basic on it. training. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, okay. So, this is y'all's, like, first time doing void fairing. You know what I mean? And they always tell you in training, don't look out the windows. Like, I know that's, like, day one stuff. But, uh, someone always tries to do it. And and it's, it's not good. And then you get, you get a case of the skull shivers, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's nasty. Yeah. Not really an experience I want to repeat. Oh, yeah, you stink of void, man. Sorry, that's kind of rude, I know, but, like, you got a whole thing around you. Yeah, that's Trust tracks. me, I know. I've been around it a lot. Okay, you seem chill. Yeah, mostly, I guess. Alright, so, and he, like, grabs another fistful of space almonds. He's like, alright, so... Let me tell you who's not chill. <sighs> There's one other guy that's going to be on the crew. Actually, a lady. Mm -hmm. uh, she sucks. Just sucks. But they're going to make her come along because... What do I mean by she sucks? Yeah. Okay. Think of someone you really don't like. I have a list. I got quite a few people I can think of. Yeah. So like that, but shittier. Because she sucks. Is there a particular thing that she does? Is there something that we should be aware of? Alright, you didn't hear this from me. But... Mm -hmm. She is a narc, man. Total narc. Oh, I see. And mm. she, I'm guessing, gets in the way of your extra activities. Oh, or no, she doesn't care about that. I, I, I do tons of drugs on the ship. That's fine. No, it's, uh, it's the fact that she, like... She's reporting everything she sees back to HQ. She's like a... Um, she's like a human security camera. You know what I mean? She's like mm, the... Yeah. The Todd Consortium um, representative on ship. Exactly. She's a column, of course. Uh, mm. Her name's Navari. And she'll be all cool to your face. She'll be super nice. But trust me, she sucks. Awful. I have no people like that. I'm very well aware You'll probably see her at the ball tonight. Seems like she would be the type to have quite a bit of information that we can rely on. Oh yeah, no, she's like she's wicked smart. She knows all kinds of stuff. Probably knows more about the Todd Consortium's uh, roots and all that stuff. I mean, when I get navigation data, I mostly get it from her. You know, she holds the keys to the kingdom, so to speak. But uh, uh, I just don't like her. I don't trust her. 
But she's going to be on the crew, so we're going to have to learn to live with her. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, so I hey. Know, well, I like so. For letting us know. I Thanks, do appreciate Oshawa. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, when we're, uh, <clears throat> when we're out there, you know, sailing through the void, you can always come hang with Weha. You know, I'm just trying to get along. Uh, I, I'm under orders to listen to the commander. So, uh, as long as the commander's orders don't directly contradict Todd Consortium protocol. But, mm. I mean, what I don't know won't hurt me, you know what I mean? So... True, but I, I don't think that you would have to worry about that. The Todd Consortium is the whole reason why you are here. Their expectations are reasonable. And um, we'll be fine. It's mostly reasonable. I never liked the one about how we can't pick up hitchhikers, though. I mean, I just always thought they'd be kind of cool. But getting big. But, I mean, the that. planets that we're going to aren't inhabited, so that isn't something that we need to worry about. Not inhabited that we know of. Could be. True. That's the cool part. Makes an excellent point there. There will probably become a time where maybe even between planets we will have a chance to pick up hitchhikers. Not that we will. Well, what Not is also on the list is that we are to keep to the destination list. So, no. Yeah, that's right. Yep, no going off course. Uh, if you try to do that i'm under orders i can't help you navigate anywhere that's not on the itinerary just the rules that's all well i i think you're gonna be an excellent member of this crew because as they say every member of a crew is to make up for what the others cannot do and i believe that's big help to just being a well-functioning machine. Yeah, and you're you're super tall, and like I can't reach stuff on high shelves, so we are I am, I am making very up. Tall. Oh, yep. I'm much I'm very tall. Like oh, over? Sean, good for you. <laughs> I think she's being sarcastic. I'm not good. She at She is being sarcastic. She, she's. <laughs> I, I I have difficulty also, and she is being very sarcastic. It used to yeah, be she's she's being, she's being sarcastic. Being Wait, huh? I like that. Am I yeah. coming to the ball? <laughs> Am I coming oh. to the ball? Yes. You know, I was thinking of skipping it, but if y'all want me to come, that might be fun. Well, you're a member of the crew. I would see no reason for you not to come. Yeah, but you know, these functions are usually because it's like new crew of people, first time going in the void, want to shine. I mean, I've done this a bunch of times, so it's nothing new to me. I've been to a lot of balls. I, you know, I dance at a lot of weddings, as they say. But the, uh, but for you guys, it's a big deal, and uh, you know, y'all seem chill. So I think, um, I think for to support y'all, sure, yeah, I'll go right on. Lovely, sounds good. Then I'm sure you'll look great in whatever formal attire you wear. I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually gonna give this to you guys as a boon because I was not going to have Wayhog go to the party. I was going to have him sit it out, but <laughs> since we have a retweet goal, you're getting a party with Weha. I mean, that is a boon and a blessing. That is, a, that <laughs> like, is everything. Uh, that is everything right there. That's our dude. I'm excited. Yeah, we need Weha there. Mm -hmm. I feel How like we can just find you. <laughs> huh? I feel like we can just find you a nice hat. I like hats. Yeah, cool. Nice hat. Good, it look is. good in the hat. We also hit our second retweet goal. Holy cow. So there is a Bane coming up. Oh, Dang. Oh. The narc comes to the party, what? too. The oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not going to lie. He, the, the, the narc was going to be there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll come up with something for the oh, That's true. Narc. Narcvari. Okay. Narcvari. But yeah, no, they like it. They like it when the crews like spend time together before they take off. So 
y'all should go get ready. If you like, if you need clothes, uh, talk to somebody from the consortium. Um, and, and maybe they can hook you up. If not, if you got money, uh, you can go into town and go to Shiafar and get some clothes or something. It's cool. I, I clean up good. I know what it yeah. looks like, but I clean up good. Don't worry. I'm going to look great. I mean, I think so. Yari, you and I should go shopping for new dresses. We should go immediately. We should go right now. Sanha, I was going to ask you if I could borrow something of yours because I do not have any formal wear. No, 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 no. Borrowing, no borrowing, only things new. New things for us, for this trip, for this ball. Yes. Who's paying? My, don't worry about it. I will. Okay. Cool. That's really nice. You're a good commander. Thank you. Yara is the best friend that I have. And no friend of mine is going to go in ugly, worn before gowns. God, no. Yara starts blushing. <laughs> she turns. <laughs> she turns. Your skin actually changes color. <laughs> yeah, it's like kind of like a rainbow color. It's a faint iridescent on her cheeks. Aww. <laughs> That's so oh my adorable. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is so adorable. <laughs> Yeah, something oh. that color. Yes, Yara, something that color for you. I think it'll look very good. Chromatic. Mm -hmm. Dig it. Like that. Mm -hmm. All right, Should so they have I'm Oshan go... come shopping with us? No. <laughs> okay. Well, I was Sorry, Oshan. Shopping. Uh, no, it's it's totally fine, Yara. I was I was going to go try to purchase some clothes myself. Um I won't be in your way, don't worry. Alright. I'm gonna get ready. Uh, I actually already got my cabin set up on the ship. Oh, by the way, I didn't tell you. The ship. Your ship. Your void vessel. Is called the Sentinel. Ooh. Cool, huh? That's yeah. a nice name. Sentinel. Sentinel. What are we guarding? I got a cabin. What's that? Sentinel, what are we guarding? Uh... Nothing, man. You're sailing on it. I don't understand the question. Sentinel means guard. I think we... Oh, yeah. But, like, you're not guarding nothing. That's... So, I have a thing about... I tend to take things really literal. Uh, I'm so working I on think... it. It's a... I think maybe what it means is we're kind of guarding the future, you know? Hmm. Poetic. I like that. You don't see it's it. dope. O'Shawn doesn't see yeah. it, but he was definitely thinking what Yara asked. He just did he was he was very so nervous. That. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she's just like, okay, we've got no sarcasm, very little, so it's like, yeah, I, I think we're I think we're guarding the future. That's it. Like you, you saw him visibly relax when Zohar yep. gave the explanation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah, smart. Yeah. Uh, my cabin's on the top. Y'all are going to be on the second floor. There's a bunch of cabins. Anyway, you'll see it later on. Go get ready. Go have fun. I'll see y'all later, okay? See you there. And he... He kind of... Weha kind of walks like... Like he's always kind of power walking, like he like pumps his fist a little bit. He just kind of <laughs> shuffles his way out of the room. And there's like a little little butt shake, like a little bit of a jake. He's kind of like always looks like he's dancing a little. You can you can see like there's like it, it's as if there's uh, there's um, invisible maracas in his hand somehow. Like he's just kinda, <laughs> he's all hips. Look, he's all hips. Look, look, way don't way imagining way like the little acapella egg shakers. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> He totally it. has a bunch of those little shakers. <laughs> Look, I'm saying his way up better be made of jam because Zilly don't jiggle like that. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> oh. Oh I love God. and I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what do y'all want to do in the time intervening uh, to the ball? 
Um, oh, sorry, it's oh you, would, you would have to go like yeah. The other thing like on your list to do like to do this is like you'd have to go back to the dorms and like clean out your dorm and like pack up your stuff and all that. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Probably uh, do that. Yeah, I, I am definitely gonna like go back, clean out my barracks, but I am gonna ask Zohar if they can come with me to go clothes shopping because he needs a second pair of eyes for this. Yeah, mm -hmm. same. I haven't done this in a while. Yeah, let's do it. It's been a while um, since I ever had to buy any clothes from self in any kind of formal situation. Usually I I, I had a formal wear, but uh, I believe I outgrew it. Yeah, that tends to happen as you get older. You know, you either outgrow oh, no, it vertically uh, or you outgrow yeah. it. Also, is uh, <clears throat> not really sure what to look for. You know what the modern trend is now when it comes to formal wear. I would like to look, um, you know, presentable, despite you know all of this. I guess that's when you really notice when you notice that uh, Oshan stands out in a very like in a way that um that he has resting fight me face kind of thing going <laughs> on and it's because okay. also he's so large and so uh he because he also he's so large and he's a, and he's and he's uh he's also half blood it's also like a lot of the a lot of his features that you can see now there a lot of his features are very like ones you don't want to look at directly, kind of like, oh, I should, shouldn't be looking at you because I don't want to stare too hard kind of thing. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. So Zuhar and Oshan are going shopping together, and Yara and Sana are separately going shopping. So the place you would have to go is Shiafar, which is the major city just outside. Big, sprawling. It's actually several cities kind of jammed together, and it, it looks from above... Um, as I said before, as like skyscrapers that are like giant anthills, um, essentially very big, rounded, uh, made of earth and rock, but huge. I mean, stretching up, you know, hundreds of feet into the air. Uh, Y'all, um, on your way out uh, from the consortium uh, training facility, you're all handed badges that identify you as employees of the Todd Consortium. Now, your actual, your voidfarers. Your official void fairy. No. Oh. Um, hmm. Which uh, a column explains to you um, is to, you know, like, if anyone gives you trouble, show them this, basically. Cool. Um, because humans in Shi'afar tend to be a bit discriminated against, uh, but this will help. Uh, humans of any stripe, rather. Part shark I was about to say, if 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 our if our shark slash demon cred can't get us out of trouble, our badges will yeah. help us. Our badges will save us. Yay! We'll be fine. Yeah. Um, when we arrived, like, so when you... we arrived to the bazaar, mm -hmm. go, ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go um, on, when go we arrived, like, <laughs> well, you see that, um, like, Ashan definitely he's kind of hunching his shoulders a bit to kind of make himself look less imposing, less to stand out in the crowd. Like, he's very self-aware of how different he looks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking maybe we go to a place where we can get something tailored for you. Let's keep an eye out for that. Oh, what exactly will we need to look for? Uh, is there anything special that I would have to look for in this game, or is this just? Or, you know, I just find somebody. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Uh, something like that. You see how it's like partially sewn together, but not completely. Oh, I see. They yeah. wait until they figure out how tall you are and what your dimensions, proportions, and stuff are. Put something together in no time. And I can choose whatever I want. 
Yeah. Hmm. I like that. All right, let's go there. That's what so we do. So you do find a tailor. You do find a tailor. Oh, Sean, what, uh, tell me, like, describe. What does your getup look like that you get made? Um, Oshan's getup is, um, originally he was going to go with, like, a traditional looking, like, formal wear, like, uh, nice pants, jacket kind of thing. But every, every time he put on a jacket, the sleeves would always rip. Um, <sighs> so, yeah, that, it was like that. He would just put it on and it would just rip. And it got to the point where he just felt uncomfortable wearing sleeves. So he got some nice looking, uh, really fancy robes that he could wear. Ones that are loose enough that if he did need to, uh, and this is exactly what his words were, loose enough robes that just in case a fight does break out, I am not inhibited by by the constraints of my clothes. I need full movement of my arms just in case I need to fight. Two points. One, when you say your sleeves ripping, I'm picturing O'Shawn wearing like a Larry the Cable Guy tuxedo with the sleeves ripped off which is hilarious to me. Um, and also picturing from what you just said that O'Shawn is in like a robe and when he gets in a fight, he just strips naked and then like, throws his clothes aside and then throws down. It's it's very much, he just takes the robe, like throws it off his shoulders, ties the sleeves around his waist so that he's ready to go. So yeah, you get yourself some nice formal robes. The tailor is a an old column who when the two of you walk in um, at first says some bullshit to the effect of like, you, um, basically we don't serve your kind here um, until he sees your badge, sees that you are Todd Consortium and their money is very good here. Um, of course, if you want to tell this guy to just fuck off and go somewhere else, <laughs> you're welcome to, but uh or stick it out one way. I don't care. Whatever, however you think you would react to that sort of thing, because that is a common. It's an account. It's a common enough occurrence in Shiofar. Because it's Oshan, uh, he would just he would say no and walk out and find the next door. Because yeah, that's the kind of guy he is. As soon as he heard that, he was like, "Well, you don't deserve our money then," and he will just head right out. And um, and what he does is, and he like he actually looks very upset. And what he does is, he just walks into the very first store he sees, buys the first like formal looking robes he could find, and just walks out. It doesn't even like he doesn't even ask, doesn't even cut to the point. He just goes in, buys it, and walks out because he's that upset. So hard, you see O'Shawn sort of storming off. And how how does this all make you feel? And what do you do for yourself and for O'Shawn? I'm definitely going to follow you when you storm out of the place. You know, I think maybe I have something in with my old barracks kit. Because I wish I could say it gets easier. But it doesn't really. Uh, and yes, you didn't I, deserve that. Yes, I, I'm sorry that you saw me lose my temper. but uh, Don't be. I, 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 I can't tolerate that at all. I understand this you is the world you the live person. in, but no. Yeah. You weren't the person who chose to respond to a simple offer of business with cruelty. You have nothing to apologize for. Besides, you're going to look great in those robes. I do believe I will look fantastic in these robes. He smiles and he's like, even when he smiles, it still looks like, oh my gosh, why are you trying to fight me kind of look. Because you see of rows shark of shark teeth. teeth. <laughs> yeah. The shark teeth, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I think like we've known each other long enough at this point that I know that, that it's like a genuine yeah. expression of happiness though and yeah. Just, just... What does Zohar get to wear? You said you had something at the barracks. Uh yeah, so in the bottom of like, you know, the chest or whatever that's at the foot of the bed, um, kind of an older 
fabric-y looking, uh, I'm thinking like a stola, which is the kind of like dress that women used to wear in ancient Rome. So it's kind of a tunic, but then it also mm -hmm. has like a little bit of a cloak over it with some pins and, and stuff in the shoulders. Um, that's uh, sort of like dyed in this, this blue color that's faded over time. It's a little bit darker where it's been uh, creased and stuff because it's been lying in the bottom of a box for a while. But um, yeah, it still smells, you know, really fresh and it's got some, some leaves and flowers and stuff folded up uh, in the fabric. Mm. Yeah. That. Right. Yeah, so uh, you do I would also the... look around and see if I could find any gloves, just like little wrist length gloves. Oh yeah, sure. Dress, yeah, class it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely something you can get. Uh, you do have to look around a little bit to find a place that has gloves that are fitted to human hands. Um, but you do find yeah. uh, in a in a bazaar, um, you do actually find a human who is who is hawking clothes specifically for the human population. Uh, of Aniar, and you find a pair of gloves, um, not the fanciest, but they will match the color nicely, and look very yeah, nice. Yeah, it's good. I just want something so you to get cover all... the uh, metallic, <laughs> metallic fingers. Fair enough. You get all done up, head back to your dorms, and uh, pack things up to get ready. And Sana and Yara, you guys are going to the city too, right? Yeah, what what kind of stuff would you want to get? How do you want to um, look? First of all, thank Sana, you for those thousand bits yeah. from our justice just came through. Anyway, oh, good. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Um, Sanha is going to tend to Yara first, and basically, will it takes Yara to the classiest, nicest, um, like, uh, oh my gosh, Taylor <laughs> that <clears throat> she knows in town that has accommodated her before. Um, that's like something very important. So the, the best one that she's ever gone to and drags Yaya in and is just like, anything you want, anything you want, like it. Oh, um, you see her basically like go through the whole store Picking up something, smelling it, even at some point, like if the tailor's not looking, licks it a little bit and then no, puts yeah, it back. Yeah, please, please, yeah, please, yeah, please oh, don't lick the clothes. I don't, I don't know which one I want. How can I tell if I don't taste it? I have taste, and I will tell you if it is good taste or not. What about this one? Mm. Put it up against you. What about this one? Mm. That one, the second one. Okay. And Yara will basically, like, just go through whatever Sanha chooses. Uh, Yara has no opinion and is super, super indecisive. Oh, no. <laughs> um. Then, yeah, no, after a while, like, it's a lot of, like... Okay, choice one or choice two? All right, now two or one. <laughs> and like a lot of like that. Is this better? Is that better? Until eventually they narrow it down to I think one dress. And Sanha is like, yeah, that's the one. I think it probably has a bunch of feathers on it. Ooh. Maybe it just looks oh, kind of, of like a blanket of feathers. They're iridescent, like Sanha had said earlier. I love that. I love that. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. And then, like the first thing that Pick Sana picks up, Yara's like, "Oh, that is beautiful. That would look so good on you." But she also says the exact same thing to literally everything else that Sanha touches. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. Yeah. No, Sanha doesn't even question it like most of the time when somebody's like that you're like okay but like tell me like tell me what i really should get never she's like yeah no of course yeah of course this will look great mm. and is like just hearing yara is like positive reinforcement on her like, on her shoulder as she goes on the list um and i think she eventually settles on 
like a sort of more like form fitting gown that um kind of like bunch has bunches of fabrics at the shoulder and while it's kind of like a little bit higher up on the waist or the neckline up front it dips like really really low in the back um and if she were full column you would be able to see her vestigial wings but she kind of just has more like weird nubs like it's almost like her shoulder blades are trying to push out but they there's really nothing there um but that's fine she'll show those off anyway um and it's kind of like a like a rich wine color because i forgot to mention this earlier sonha mm-hmm. herself is like um like a brown uh color with like black highlights so like her the feathers in her hair have like uh are brown with like a black edging and white dots it's a particular type of lark if i remember it i'll put it in chat but Mm. (laughs) uh yeah there's a specific bird that she's like modeled after um so yeah a color to complement that and suffice it to say that you both look fine As you return back to your dorm, pack up your things, and prepare for a celebration in your honor. Do you, the four of you, uh, do you all go to the ball together? Or in different, do you stagger or what? What do you think? Uh, Zohar is doing the the thing where you're just like, you know, fussing over your kid before they go to the prom and like making sure that Oshan's collar is all straight and helping him tie his tie and everything. And yeah, absolutely going in and <laughs> and yeah, we'll, we'll we'll go in together if, if that's all right with you. Oh yeah, definitely <sighs> going in with Zohar. And Sana Yara, do you all go as a unit, the four of you? Or separately? Yes. Yes, Sanha will drag Yara because they are a team. They are one expedition-based team. We must go together. Looks better that way. Yeah, especially and if leaving... Sanha and Oshan go together. It 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 continues. <laughs> like, after everything that happened <laughs> in the interview, she's like, "We have to look united." Um, and as you're like packing up and getting ready to leave the dorm. Um, you have a note at your dorm that tells you to pack up your belongings and take them with you um, to the ball, because you don't, you mean, everything you have, all of you can be fit in, like, a couple suitcases. Um, take them with you, escorts will take them to the Sentinel, um, and then after the ball, it's pretty much straight to the ship after that, and get ready to go. There'll be a little bit of rest in between, but not much. And um, as you're leaving the dorm, Weha is coming up to the dorm, walking up, doing the, doing the Weha shuffle, and you see that he's wearing. When he told you that he cleans up good, he's wearing literally the same clothes, but they've been cleaned. Yes. I, I was really hoping for tuxedo T-shirt, but this is even better. <laughs> no, I, just, I was hoping for nineteen seventies ruffle tuxedo, but this is better. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Your bane is Ruffle Tux. No. Um, he's, <laughs> he, uh, <coughs> Weha is, uh, Weha is very, very literal, and he literally cleaned. Um, he washed his clothes. And you see, he, uh, you can smell, like, the smell's kind of good, the mildewy smell is gone, and he just has that kind of patchouli m- mist around him. And, he sees the four of you walking out and he's like, whoa! Y'all look awesome! Cool. Hey, you we never do this, but... as we saw you. Nah, I'm clean. I told you. No, he, he cleaned up very well. Yep. Way high's as good as his word. That's what I always say. That's actually really reassuring to know. I feel like I'm always going to totally. know exactly where I stand with you then. That's good. Did we buy yeah, no, hat? you're always going to stand... You're always going to stand like a few feet taller. Do y'all have a hat? Yeah, yeah. I have a hat. If you want to... Um, it's just like a 
retcon that you bought him a hat when you were in Shi'afar. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, I forgot totally. to say so, but I, I absolutely wanted to get just a tiny little fez with a tassel. <laughs> a little fez? Oh, it's a, a fez. fez. Oh, cool. I love it. Thank you. Puts it on. He, like, spins the yeah, tassel. So... <laughs> oh, great. That's pretty easy to make sure it, it fits... Most head shapes. This is Looks awesome. Good. Thank you. I love it. This is killer. You you wear it very well, way, huh? Thanks, man. I'm gonna wear this all the time now. This is this is my thing now. I'm a fez guy. Wear fezes. Yeah. Like that. Fezes are cool. Fezes are cool. Yeah. So like. Y'all, we don't normally do this, but, like, y'all look so cool. Like, you should bring those clothes with you on the ship. We can have, like, fancy parties when we're on the ship. When we're in the void and stuff. It's so cool. We could have, like, dinner parties. Love it. We never do that. We never do anything fun, and y'all seem fun, I think. A little serious, but, like, fun. And I'm fun. So we're going to get along. I suppose a, I suppose a fancy, fancy dress party on the ship is not something I'll say no to. Right on. That right sounds on. like a wonderful All right, idea. Come on. This is going to be cool. And the five of you uh, leave from the barracks, walk along the north road. It is now just after sundown. To your right, as you walk up the road, is this massive, very long but narrow lake. You've never seen the other end of it. Oshan may have. I think maybe Oshan might be the only one who has. Um, but it is this very, very long, very deep, um, sort of like a glacial lake. Very narrow, but hundreds of feet deep. And the last bits of the dying sunlight are just reflecting off the top of this beautiful glass water stretching on for miles. It's a beautiful scene. And reflected against that is the, uh, is the Todd Consortium uh, estate, which is um, Lacune Kutad's home, his manor home. And you all walk up together from the barracks and you can hear long before you get in, you can hear the hum and the chatter and the clinking of glasses and hundreds of voices all in celebration, the occasional laughter, a yell, a broken glass of someone shattering the champagne. You show your badges at the door, and you are led into a grand ballroom, passing through the round uh, door of uh, Lacuni Kutad's massive, um, you know, anthill sort of <laughs> structured home. You enter into this large, bulbous ballroom that has a huge balcony along the top. And all around you are hundreds of people laughing, chatting, drinking. And at the top in the balcony is Lacune Kutad wearing these extraordinary bright emerald green robes with gold trimming. He's wearing an elaborate sort of headdress uh, his feathers atop his head have thinned noticeably in his old age. He's a bit of a bald eagle. And he has this uh, sort of supplemented with uh, a, a large feather headdress <clears throat> that makes him a solid head taller than everybody else in the room. And it is very loud as you enter here, which is why it's so striking that as soon as you walk through the door, Lakune Kutad looks down and raises his hands, and there is immediate silence in the room. And on his cue, the rest of the ballroom joins in the applause. And Lacune Kutad 
says, Hail to the latest Voidfarers. May their mission be a grand success. For the column, for humanity, and for all of the civilized galaxy, on behalf of the Todd Consortium, I salute all of you. Good luck. He raises a glass. A waiter comes by and quickly hands all of you champagne, whatever the space champagne. And and they invite you to join in the toast. I hold my space champagne There's another... in between my thumb and pinky because it's so large. There is another round of applause and Weha says wow they never did that for any of my other crews that's cool we're awesome we're a good crew we are pretty awesome we're the best crew what do they have i agree well except for oh fuck 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 as you see a column strutting toward you gliding, nay, across the floor. <clears throat> Flowing silken red robes with a black trim and floral embroidery all up and down. It's quite a stunning, uh, quite a stunning column, this one is. No fancy headdress like Lacune Kitad, but, uh, but naturally tall. About as tall as O'Shawn. Hmm. She has her wings folded, well, not her wings, her arms folded in front of her, sort of lazily, and struts toward and says, So this is my crew. Hello. And offers her hand to Sana. Um, Sana takes her hand, shakes it, but also, like, bows her head respectfully, and it's just like, an honor. I understand you are the commander. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. Um, if there's anything Way that has. I can do for you. Uh, I think Sonha, like, sees that out of the corner of her eye, but she is focused. <laughs> and just like, <laughs> um, anything that I can do for you, anything you need from me or the crew, um, just let me know. I, it is a pleasure. My my dear Sana, it's it's what I can do for you. I, I am there to be your support on your mission. You and your kind are due to find a, a new home for humanity. And I must say it is an honor to to be a part of this mission. It's a a sign of goodwill between our peoples. I'm here to help. I do have certain capabilities. I am gifted in ways of healing and uh, communicating with the void forces themselves. And I, 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 I very much look forward to helping you any way I can. I am at your service. Thank you. Um, Arbiter. Yeah. Can I make some kind of roll to get a read on this individual? Because Weha has been like telling us a lot, and I want to check and see what's the tea? <laughs> what's going on? Are they really a spill the tea, sis? Yeah, um, roll for tea. Roll for tea. Roll. Give me a spill check. Roll for expression. Mm. What skills do you have, anyway, in your skills list? Um, I have, have expressions, expression, subterfuge, and observation. Observation, yeah, that's what we want. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm just gonna go ahead and roll. I'm mute because my laptop is so, or my, like, keyboard is...
If it helps, use the... There you go. Five. Did that have the bonus Ooh, on it? I... Yeah. No, it doesn't. I, that didn't um, have the plus I was one. It's a six. so close to hanging up. Yeah, it's a six. <laughs> <laughs> six. <laughs> like, All right, you have, you have three re-rolls. You have three re-rolls. Do you want to um, use them? Any yeah, other? let's let's do a re-roll. Let's let's burn some of these babies. Um, okay. Use them. Okay, release. and then that's, for the plus that's one. A that's a twelve. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. That's a good one. Sana, you you were kind of a high society woman, right? I mean, you were you were raised among yeah. wealthier people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As someone raised in that world you long since learned the difference between polite and kind. Yes. Navari is very polite. But you can smell bullshit a mile away. Yes. And this is someone who clearly knows what to say, um, but you sense that her loyalty is not to you. It's, she's, she's a company woman. She is a representative of the Todd Consortium. That's what she cares about. She doesn't really give a shit about you. But you can just see it in that fake, like, shit-eating grin. Um, this is a phony. Uh, she's, you know, you're not getting, like, you're not picking up um, that she's, like, malicious or anything. But she doesn't care about you at all. She's, she's just playing the game. So you say you've got um, abilities that... to uh oh, sorry. Go ahead. Though. Okay. I was just saying that it's like Saha's like face just does not fall. She still has that smile. And even as she like lets go of uh I don't think we got their name, but this individual's hand. Navari. Know, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh Navari. Well, in character, I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want everyone to roll an awareness test. Awareness. But why, awareness. though? I'm so bad at that. <laughs> <laughs> Tis a nine. <laughs> oh! How, could, how did two of you craft oh that? Oh my god! No. Amazing! Oh, no. oh my god! Oh no! <laughs> I'm okay, I'm Wally's is not a crit. Rebels? Wally is Wally's is not a crit fail because you have to roll a one on the die for crit fail. You just suck. Yeah, yeah I meant that's Yara but, and Liv. But both the other two, failed. yeah, Yara and yeah. Liv both crit failed. So I'm gonna reroll. Uh, yeah, Yara and Liv. Yara and Sana. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, my. Bro! I, I'm definitely going to use my reroll. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! <laughs> you know I, what? We have. I'm. Um, I'm just. We're almost at the end of the. You know what? I'm go big or go home on the first night. Am I right? Yes. Hey, there, yes. there's a yes. six. This is why people donate Bruh. them, folks. <laughs> Bruh! What do you mean? <laughs> Hold what on. are the odds? <gasps> oh my is D20, god! Is roll twenty broken? For those of you at home, that's three. Liv just rolled three consecutive crit fails. Yep. Yo, what are the odds of that? Okay, so yeah. Oshan and Zohar. Zohar got a nine. Ashan yeah. got a six. Zahar is the only one that passed. Mm. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Z- Yara and Sana, you both crit failed. You overhear somebody nearby at a table. Uh, there's like a little food table nearby. You overhear someone saying... Is this me or... No, Sana and Yara. You okay. both catch this in your... You both catch this in your ear. You overhear someone saying, it's just... 
It's just disgusting that they let them take a ship. I hope they disinfect it afterward. Zohar? You catch something entirely different. While, while these two catch someone sounds like they're talking shit, you see a woman um, kind of jetting through the party, like shuffle walking very fast, seemingly trying to get away from everyone, like just really like got somewhere to be, um, who is sort of like literally golden skinned. I mean, like literally gold. Um, a bright, gleaming kind of yellow, metallic skin, not unlike yours, um, who is humanoid, but has these sort of like pointed winged ears. And she is like elbowing her way through the crowd. And you see her kind of like, excuse me, sorry, excuse me, sorry, sorry. And then gets to a door at the back of the ballroom and then like stops and straightens herself, opens the door, peeks in and looks around looks over her shoulder to make sure no one's watching and then into the door. I'll be right back, O'Shawn. And I'm going to follow her. Oh, okay. Uh, he, like, O'Shawn is, like, looking around nervously because he's left alone. Uh, uh, yeah, no, uh, Sanha, like, grabs Yara, by the way, and drags her away from this conversation. Probably the opposite direction of where Zohar ran off to. Yeah, so um, Oshan looks at Yara, Zohar go one way, looks at Sanha and Yara go the other way, so you see Oshan, <laughs> all six foot six, 200 pounds, just standing there super awkwardly, holding a tiny little champagne glass between his fingers. All of a sudden, Oshan, uh, it's just you... And Weha. Weha. And he's uh, What uh, was what uh, uh, fuck was that about? Uh, uh I I don't know. Uh I, I don't know what I'm supposed and to Navari do. And Navari is still standing in Navari's still standing in front of you with her with her arms folded and just looking at you like I don't know what's happening right now. What is? I this? don't know what I'm supposed. To, I'm not. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do either. Um, yeah. I was waiting for you to introduce yourself. Oh, yes. Um, I'm. I'm. I'm Oshan. Navari. And we'll cut away there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sana and Yara. <laughs> what are you two doing? Um, I think Sanha grabs, like, another two, no, three more champagne flutes, puts one of them in Yara's hand, she, like, throws back another, and then starts sipping the second one that she grabbed for herself. Did, did they say what I think they said? Are they talking about us? No, I think they're confused about something else. They're probably talking about, um, they did, who knows what people like this talk about, but no, they're not talking about us. <laughs> that is hilarious. You hear that same voice and you realize that she's right behind you. Yara chugs on her. On her straightens her shoulders, turns around. What's funny? I thought you said something was funny, and, um, I'm waiting, but all I see is you. So are you the joke? First of all, burn. Um, <laughs> actually, that's worthy of, a. Uh, where did I? That is, that is worthy of a, uh, oh, it doesn't work. Never mind. Um, she. Thank you. <laughs> Taken, taken, a, I had a thing, but <laughs> she is taken aback. Um, 
and says, oh, oh, here it is. Burn! Anyway, um, <laughs> she, is, she is taken aback and says, I'm sorry, do I, do I know you? No. Well, actually, you probably should. This party that you're enjoying is here in our honor. But who are you? Oh, of course, that's right. No, yeah, you're the Void Fairs. That's great. That's so good for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm BB. Um, I just work for the Todd Consortium, honey. That, that's all. Um, but I'm, you know, it's, it's really cool. Um, that you know, humans are, are humans are finally getting to go out on the on the ships. That's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, have I have I offended you? Uh, you you just called me a joke. Um, it, have I? Have I wronged you somehow? Sorry, I just, I overheard some people making some unseemly comments. Um, I might be a little bit on the defensive. Oh. Well, no, all, all we was talking about was that there's, uh, that, well, we know the Todd Consortium wants you to, like, gather specimens when you're on other planets, and, you know, that's dangerous, because... I, personally, I work in infectious disease, and if, if you're taking samples from other planets and bringing them on the ship, that could possibly bring in diseases or bacterium that your immune systems aren't adapted to on account of they evolved on another planet. So I was really just concerned for your safety. I mean, I just really hope that they have good disinfection protocols, that's all. Well, you know... It's a great, that very reason is the exact, like that mindset, that concern is the exact reason why Yara was selected to go with us. And so I'm not like pushes Yara up next to her. Yara <laughs> is one of the brightest minds in our generation, let alone her field. You know, she's just, she can do it all. She's an incredible biologist, very thorough in her work. And uh, as soon as you're pushing Yara forward, she looks like she's she's waiting. She's been she's ready. As soon as someone said infectious diseases, she actually pulls a little notebook out of the folds of her dress. And she says, "Yes, I've precisely prepared all of my notes. I am ready for the first specimen. I know exactly what to do. I've memorized the protocol forwards and backwards. There is no way, in any circumstance, that this will go other than according to plan." Isn't she a genius? <laughs> Just a reminder, you uh. You crit failed that awareness test, which is why you look like the asshole now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's totally why fine. I tricked you. <laughs> that, oh, that is wonderful. I am so... We, we are getting the finest recruits these days. Uh, you're you're going to be wonderful. Yara, was it? Congratulations, Yara. You're, you're going to be great. I'm rooting for you. Thank you. I'm glad you were not making an awful joke. I was about to be very angry oh, at you. No. no, honey, no. Some people are like that, you know. There's, I know that y'all sometimes have it hard, especially on Ani Art. Call them a little close minded, but no, I was one of the ones that was pushing for a human expedition. I think y'all are, y'all are great, perfectly capable. You're gonna be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Zohar. You follow this woman to the door. You reach the door. There's a little window in it, a little round portal window. And you can see on the other side, to the left, there's a door open and light coming through. And you can see rows of books. Looks like a library. That appears to be where she went. What do you do? I'm going to follow her. Or where I think she went. Okay. You open the door. Do you want to be stealthy, or are you just barreling? I'm not running, but I'm not like delete, 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 delete. I'm just like moving like a normal, <laughs> like a normal person. You reach the, you go through the door. Mm -hmm. You reach the open door with light shining through it, and you see that this woman is pulling books from the shelves. Flipping through them frantically. She has a small notebook. She's flipping through things, taking notes. 
goes to a desk at the corner and starts opening it up, looking through, pulling out papers, trying to find something. Find something. Did you, uh... Did you, uh, lose something in here? Ah! Sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to scare you. I just was wondering if you lost something and maybe you wanted help finding it. You just kind of ran out really quickly and I thought maybe something... Uh... Are you... Are you the... You're one of the Voidfarers. Yes. Come in here and close the door. Okay. I was hoping I could talk to one of you. But I don't really know what to say. And I don't know, maybe you won't believe me. But there's something not right about this expedition. What do you mean? I am one of the people in charge for the Todd Consortium of choosing the new worlds that our crews go to search. I was handed a file a few months ago about a potential new world to look for. And when I went to follow up on it, all of a sudden, all mention of it was erased from our records. Like it never happened. When I ran it up the chain, they said I must be mistaken. That there was no planet. That I'm thinking of something else. And I know what I saw. I knew I had a file for a potentially habitable world, and it was erased. Completely erased. Right off the map. I'm just... I'm worried about all of you. There's been... There was this ship. The last expedition. It left. And it came back. And the whole crew was gone. Gone. But the ship came home. Unharmed, no damage. But the crew just... Poof. And the Todd Consortium just... Took the ship and put it back into service. No questions asked. Do you think this had something to do with your missing world? Planets are disappearing. Crews are disappearing. They're up to something. I just don't know what. And the only people... I mean, you're human. I, you should be invested in this. You, you, you need to know this. You need to know who you're working with. I believe you. Thanks for telling me. Um, uh, just for clarification, was this person a column or a human or? Looks to be a half blood. Of some Between kind. You're not sure what the other alien species and human is. Human, maybe. Okay. okay. Not okay. column. No, human and something. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know what they're hiding. I don't know why, but they're hiding something. And I, I can't tell my superiors, but I wanted to tell one of you. One of you need to know. I was just 
hoping I could find some more information in here. I can communicate with you. If I find anything, I'll let you know. We have... There is a communication system. I, I, I can send you coded messages if something comes up. Yeah, and if we find anything... I mean, there's always official records we have to keep, but those aren't the only records that I keep. Okay. All right. Why are you... Why are you telling me this, though? Like, why now? Because... That ship that left and came back with no crew. It was called the Sentinel. And I hear it's back in service. And that's where we will end this session tonight. How we doing, guys? We good? <laughs> Great. Amazing. Had a blast. Let oh me God, tell that was you, so that good. was, um... Wow. wow, that was... Mm. I was just expecting... I volunteered <laughs> for, like, several weeks of these cliffhangers, and now I am regretting all of my life choices. <laughs> you know this is what... <laughs> This is what I do. Mm -hmm. I know, I know. Yeah. Oh, that was fantastic. Very that was fantastic. To be fair, I was looking for thank you to thank you to the end games for the raid. You came in right at the end, but you get to watch the debrief part. But uh, we just yeah. we yeah, just ended on a little important. cliffhanger. Their their ship oh, is a little, a little uh, one. cursed. Yeah, it's a little bitty one. <laughs> yeah, we're we're just only slightly fucked, but it's gonna be fine. <laughs> The Sentinel. This is gonna be great. I am very intrigued. This is very exciting. Yeah, I was hoping we'd actually get off the planet by the end, but nothing ever goes to plan. Uh, that'll be the very beginning of the next. Time. That's actually kind of nice. So that gives me more time. The one thing I've been looking forward to the most is getting to describe going into the void for the first time. I miss and I actually don't mind that we're gonna have a little more time to to talk with it. It'll be more. That a little bit like more void talk. Yeah, yeah, that's a great way to begin. Yeah, I mean, it would have made a great cliffhanger ending too, going into the void, but it works just as well at the beginning. I'm happy with it. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to. Um, let me do a, us uh, describing our rooms on the the yeah, stuff uh, that we oh, showed oh, in the room. Oh my god! I am looking forward to that. Especially since Sam, oh. I think, has the biggest room of them all. Oh, I do. Yes. Uh, let me just do like a very quick sort of debriefing. Uh, let me start with Wally. Um, Wally, uh, how are you feeling about the way about the way that went? And um, you know, uh, anything? Did anything uh, make your spine um, tingle? Or I, I am it, one. It's because it's like a totally new, one percent new system for me, new world for me, and everything. So I, I wasn't sure what to expect going into this at all whatsoever. And I was not disappointed at all by this. I love the setting. I love that it's it's space bureaucracy, and I'm really here for that. <laughs> I, 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 I'm just I'm a sucker for I'm a I'm a sucker for stuff like that. I love that kind of stuff. Um, but what I'm really what I really enjoying is the fact that all like these quirks that we made up during our session zero has either been amplified by 10 or we took that and we just added more stuff on top of it. Cause man, let me tell you, I was expecting Oshan just to be, you know, the burly silent fighter, but no, he's also the most awkward big boy you could ever meet in your entire life. Yeah, totally. Um, that, that really worked. And I, I, I loved, um, you mentioned your quirks coming out quickly i really so my favorite thing my favorite trick that i pulled this time was the fact that i got stella's 
answers to her backstory questions today. And one thing Stella wrote in there, if you don't mind me saying, um, was that like, yeah, it'd be kind of cool if Va showed up at some point. And I'm like, fuck you, I'll just put it in the first scene. <gasps> oh, that was <laughs> 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 Top 10 anime The way I hate him. I hated Va so much. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's the faux, oh, it's the faux, gosh. it's the faux white knight bullshit of like, I'm going to pretend to be all humble. So I get, the oh, fuck that guy. Oh, uh, I, I loved, I loved getting you with that one though. Um, <laughs> Stella, <laughs> like you, you wrote it so passive. It's like, oh, it'd be kind of cool if maybe he showed up at some point and like, all right. I got you immediately. I wasn't expecting that to happen at all, which is why I wrote it. I was like, oh, I you know, tell. just throw a bone, like maybe, you know, yeah. last episode callback or something. Then you're like, Vosh. And I was like, <laughs> right away. One beer. That was satisfying, <laughs> though, the end of that scene, doing the, doing the like, okay, you go that way, you go that way. Congratulations, you That was like. Especially and watching also, the most satisfying part of that was watching y'all do like the oh yes <laughs> that yeah you realize what was happening yeah but also once again I, I'm just shouting out Liv thank you so much for playing along with our arguing like oh, the so scene good. where we both walked in and they because like he was addressing them both but they had this weird cup the way they were talking was like Liv would <laughs> like Shauna would say one thing and then Oshan would say other thing they were like finishing each other's sentences. The whole time, but they didn't want to acknowledge. No, they're not going to acknowledge that fact. They're not going to acknowledge they are perfect. They're not going to. They're not going to acknowledge each other. Oh no! No, thank you. I okay. So it, <laughs> anybody who's ever watched me anywhere is not surprised by Sanha. It was only a matter of time before I played a character like this because I am infamous for playing just like characters that are very sassy in some way, shape, or form. So thank you because <laughs> I need I need this as a person. <laughs> So I don't you. think I need to tell you guys that like chat chat was just like the ships were sailing so hard. Just Oh yeah. So yeah. There's no ship. There's the, no ship. There's the only the ship, ship is the only ship has come into port. Um Stella, how are you? Stella, are you good? Oh uh, yeah. Stella, oh yeah. Are you good? How are you feeling? Oh my god. I love this. Oh my god. Just constant like here go, here go, here go. Oh man, the pace was great. Um, did not expect my character's ex to show up in the first episode. <laughs> what the heck? Wow, thank you so much. Um, that immediately checks off one of my like personal desires for the game. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love these characters so much. I just wanna I hug them. them. Best crew. Best I love crew. I them in blankies. Yeah. I know. Um, Liv, how are you doing? I had a blast. I had so much fun. Um, so, uh, like Wally said, like I, I'm like a weird person where I love like the, the the bureaucracy system, and a lot of times like that does lend itself way more to space and sci-fi settings. But I'm not like, I like sci-fi. I do, but I don't like, like, androids, and what does it mean to be human, and exploring, like, weird scientific, like, weird mm -hmm. themes of humanity in scientific mm -hmm. settings. Not my jam. So the Black Void is kind of, like, this awesome hodgepodge, because we do get that space exploration, but, like, me being a high fantasy nerd since I was, like, seven years old, <laughs> it, like, hits all of those notes that I like, too. So it's mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Definitely recommend it. Um, yes, the fight with Oshan was super, super funny. Par, aka Void Mob. So cute. So sweet. So but cute. But also just like all the times that like Yara and Sanha got to like hang out together. She's, Sanha is like way softer around Yara than I expected her to be. I kind of did expect her to kind of like brush her off and be like, ah, you're just one of my lackeys. But then like, I was like, no, like, if she saw Yara on the other side of this door, like, she would go to her. Like, she would go and rush because that's her bestie. Yeah. And so, like, I don't know. It was fun to kind of, like, see that because I, as a player, wasn't expecting that out of her. So that's always fun when you can, like, be in a situation and your character surprises you. 
yeah, the um, the it's it is. She was a little softer than I thought because like the original when we talked in session zero, it was like Sana was like I think you said like Regina George if she went to Harvard was the yes was the pitch <laughs> yes uh, like yes I thought some of that. Um, but yeah, she was more, there is like genuine, you know, Sana's a little overbearing, but there is like, you could tell, you could feel the genuine love and, yeah. and the affection that she has for Yar. And I really liked that. I, I think, I think you struck a really lovely balance with that, that I, I really enjoy. Yeah. She can't be, she, she has to have some side to her. Is she like that with everybody? Probably not, but. No. Yeah. Yar is yeah. But she's got, you know, she's got her humanity still. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and uh Anna Zohab, how you doing? How you feeling? Uh, this is fantastic. I really had a lot of fun. Uh I have so many questions. I have so many theories. Uh as anyone who's ever played a game with me knows is I have the like Charlie Day conspiracy board notebook thing, which <laughs> of course is getting shared with all of you at the end of this because I'm just like, but what if? But what if this is what's going to happen? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, that was really, really awesome. Again, like, I've never played this game before, was completely new to the system, but I was absolutely sold on the concept of ancient Babylonians in space. And yeah, it's just been... <sighs> it did not feel like we were playing for three hours. <laughs> yeah, it flew by. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. You have, yeah, um, also you win an award. Good. Oh, I, I, I win the award? What? Why? <laughs> what oh, I do? yeah, no, you win the award for, um, you win, you win today's award for throwing Colin off his game the most with the I'm gonna oh, make your office float scene. What? Yeah. I didn't see yeah. that coming. Yeah. <laughs> About no, that. We mentioned it, we mentioned it in that. chat. We mentioned it in chat, but y'all, the crew, this, this bullshit, we had no idea. We had I, no what? clue. What? didn't know. Yeah. I wasn't ready for special yeah. effects. That I wasn't ready for. I was like, uh-oh, no. Zohar about to get some void craziness up in here, about to do some void wackiness. But then, oh, no, Colin decides, like, I'm going to join in on the fun. And then that happened. No, the mm -hmm. The yeah. shock was genuine, y'all. So, it was so, great. That was awesome. That made my that, that made my fun. night right there. That was fucking awesome. I also I had no plan of like, oh, here's when the big reveal comes. Because for anybody that's just now joining her, didn't catch the beginning. Um, Zohar is the one that's a human, but she's a void marked human, so she has like had a significant encounter with the void and survived with the void mark left behind. And so uh, that translates, there is this uh, demonic aspect that just kind of like piggybacks in the back of her mind now as a, as a result of her encounter with the void. So I didn't know that's exactly that's what you were going to do, uh, but basically I just told Colin, yeah, it'd be cool if you just decided, you know, you wanted to like voice this thing that's hanging out in her brain. I'm fine with that. And then apparently I threw you off by levitating stuff. So. <laughs> Psych. But I got to be no, super no. evil in the first episode, so happy yep, with it. I'm, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I'm sure a lot this will, a lot of good episode come has this. everything. <laughs> Everything. This episode everything. has everything. It has <laughs> sharks, birds, shy bugs, demonic voice, people <laughs> living in aunt's heads. And a whole bunch of me. <laughs> <laughs> he plays everyone else. Oh my oh god. Oh my god. Yeah. I've been waiting for an excuse to use that filter in game. I don't know when I'm ever going to need to use it, but I really want to use it. Oh, it's totally when Wei Ha's high as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Wei like, oh. yeah. It's Wei Ha. Have you ever been, you ever been so high? <laughs> <laughs> um, we okay. walk into Wayhouse's well, room and he's just staring at the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Well, thank you all for joining me for that little debrief bit. Um, let us do now some quick plugs before we sign off for the evening. Um, I'm going to do it opposite order this and I'll start up at the top left with Anna. Let us uh, know where you can be seen. 
and or oh, found. Oh, hey, that's me. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Anna at Nymeria941, most places on the internet, including the Twitter, which is generally the place that I am the most active. Um, in addition to this fantastic game, which I cannot wait for the next episode of. You can find me right back here on Weave the Tale tomorrow at the same time. I'm going to be in the GM seat this time, GMing a game of Parcelings, which is about uh, people that have these weird sort of word parasite things in them that manifest as awesome inky tattoos. So clearly I have a theme going on with <laughs> cosmic entities living inside of humans. It's fun, it's good. Um, on Friday morning, you can catch me and Wally actually playing in a Lancer game over on Valdrian's channel Friday night. That's my doubleheader day. I will be returning as Agnieszka the Grendel Bard in Beyond the Twilight Road on Critical Misses. That is the dark fantasy fae bullshit campaign of all of our hopes and dreams. And then, uh, what's the other thing? Oh yeah, Estate. Uh, Wally, me, and Colin are in a game together. Uh, that is this cool, like, Victorian, cyberpunk, futuristic, everything is awful, but we're our best friends, and we're gonna get through it just fine. Uh, which is on Mondays on Colin's channel, which is twitch.tv slash Colinomicon. I think that's everything that I have going on now. I've, you, you said, uh, what? Hmm? You were putting up your finger, like, wait, wait. I, I was pointing out my name. I was just saying twitch.tv. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, I was like, I probably did That's the name of the channel. But anyway, the name of the channel yeah, is my yeah, name. That's, yeah. yeah, I'm always online. Find me there. I will be wearing different wigs each time. Bonus points if you can recognize me under the wig. Loving this, though. This is working. This whole thing is working. I'm digging this. Really dig that wig. As we said, uh, your too. cool aunt who smokes weed. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Liv. Hi, um, I'm Liv, and I don't have my own official Twitch channel, so you can just follow me on Twitter at Liv in a Day and find out where I'm popping up to annoy somebody this week, or actually this day, because um, I do a couple of different things. So on Friday, I'll be over on Q Times doing an evil campaign, like evil Pathfinders campaign. Um, I play a witch who isn't evil, she just doesn't care. Um, and that just got started last week, so brand new campaign, come check it out, it's a lot of fun. Saturday, I will be over with Friends Who Roll Dice. Um, we are going to be doing a level 20 D&D campaign, but more importantly, it's a charity campaign! Um, we are going to be raising money to fight against breast cancer. So please, 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 please come and hang out, check out, even if it's just lurking, even if it's just putting the word out, like, we really, really do appreciate anything that you can do. Um, Friends Who Will Dice does awesome charity campaigns, and they're actually looking for players right now. I'm pretty sure they're still looking for players for their uh, month-long charity marathon for next month. So check that out. Um, on Mondays, I am on Total Party Chills Under the Table, where we play, play a bunch of indie games. Tuesdays, I'm on uh, Rule of Lore's all LGBTQIA or queer plus um, a d and campaign. We're doing Water Deep, Water Deep Dragon Heist, Be Gay, Do Heists. Um, it's really just <laughs> called In Too Deep, but that's what we like to say. And then now on Wednesdays, I'm here. So I'll see y'all next week. And that is what I do so far. <laughs> Hell yeah. Stella Luna TV. Hello, hello! I'm Stella Luna here on Twitch. I'm Stella Luna TV on Twitter. Uh, I am a variety streamer. I mostly teach babies how to play TTRPGs for the first time. I love taking people that have never played any TTRPGs and teaching them how to play and also how to DM. And uh, I pretty much just open the floor and let that be a possibility, run some games, organize all that for people. But I also have my own campaign that I run on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern Town time. It's called Unbound. It uses adventures from Uncaged Anthology. Uncaged Anthology is a collection of adventures that uh, subvert tropes around mythological beings and creatures that are women. So it takes stories like Medusa, also the Valkyrie, and like spins them on their head and makes them a much more fulfilling and satisfying story. And it's all really fun stuff. And all of the players are playing as immortals that served the goddess of magic and they were stripped of their powers so they have to learn how to be mortal 
and also do all of these adventures at the same time. That's uh, that's what I do. Love it. And finally, Wally, tell the people about everything that we're in together. I know, right? Uh, what's up? It's your boy, Wally. You can find me on Twitter at Wally132, W-A-L-L-E-132, like the cute little Disney robot. Wow. Okay, so Monday, um, a state with these two people that was already said before. Wednesday, I'm here playing this fantastic game every Wednesdays, and I'm loving it. So you can catch me here over at Weave Tail playing this at 8 o'clock. Well, not 8 o'clock. Wow. 6 o'clock. And then Six. Friday, um, that is my double booking day. Um, of course, I'm playing in the morning, playing Lancer in the morning with my dear good friend Anna. But then Friday evening this week, I will be playing Starfinder over at Nomadic at 8 p.m. playing a Starfinder all bear party. And that's going to be a lot of fun. And then every other Sunday, you can find me over at the Kill DM playing Mask in Sunset City. This is our week for playing Mask. We had, we just recently had a huge, huge volume ending session where a lot of big things were wrapped up. So we're officially going into the next big volume of the big old story arc that is this comic book. And oh man, I cannot wait for what's about to happen next. Yep, and I'm in that too. <laughs> yes, I was gonna be in this one. You're just like listing yeah, my yeah, schedule so... and it's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just pretty much yeah, that that's basically it. Yeah. Space Mom yeah. is keeping the family calendar on the refrigerator, but it's just like <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here's where we're all gonna be at this time. <laughs> I mean, you already made a joke about a conspiracy board, but that is what the family calendar looks like. Just yeah, all really, these strings yeah. of all these events. Yeah. I'm absolutely it making it flavored like that now. And so good. Also, I forgot. Also, you can also catch me every Monday morning over at over on the Nomadic channel. Uh, every Monday morning, over at Nomadic channel at nine to nine o'clock, nine thirty for Gnome Brew. I am on that show as one of their hosts every Monday morning. So check oh, me out there. Wake up with a little bit of Wally in your life. And that's something I don't do. But for for this week, the the Venn diagram of me and Wally's schedule is almost a single overlapping circle. It's crazy. Um, but that that one I don't do. But what I do do. Hi, I said, dude. God. Hi, I'm Colin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at, I know. I'm a child at the end of the day. I'm Colin at Colinomicon on Twitter. Please give me a follow. Uh, I also do have my own Twitch channel, which, as Anna said, is twitch.tv slash Colinomicon. My thing, if you will is that every Sunday night, Sundays at 7 p.m. every single week, I do, uh, I run a one-shot of a different game with a whole different crew of people, a whole different system. I've had to learn, like, 20 different fucking systems in the last couple months. Um, it's been awesome. Stella's been in, uh, I think everyone has been in one except Liv, and Liv is gonna be in one coming up. Um, but I've had, like, all these lovely people have showed up there, I pull in all my friends that can tolerate me to come and play. We've done every game you can imagine. Uh, and I just, I, I own a million TTRPGs and I want to play all of them. So I decided I would. Uh, so like last week we did a Pokemon one shot that was great. This week we're doing it a little bit differently. And instead of at seven o'clock, we are doing our one shot at 2 p.m. to accommodate the time zone of our friend Ollie Jeffrey, who is the creator of the game Quietus, um, which we actually played on Weave the Tail a few months ago. Uh, on Halloween, we played it here. I GM'd it. Uh, and we've played it on my channel also. But Ollie Jeffrey made the game, and he's coming on to GM it on my channel. Um, I'm very, very excited. We have two fantastic people that are going to be in that. Uh, and so come check that out at 2 o'clock at 7 o'clock on Sunday. Normally, 7 o'clock is one-shot time on my channel. Not this week. Because at 7 o'clock this week, I'm over on Matt's channel, Killer DM, with Wally, playing Masks, where I will be reviving Major Tom, my astronaut, uh, like, Cthulhu meets Apollo astronaut superhero. Um, he has a tentacle face that he hides under a mask. Uh, he's great. I love Major Tom, and I've been looking forward to bringing him back for a really long time. So come check that out. Uh, my channel also, every other Friday, we have a talk show called the gm postmortem uh it's on tomorrow night so check it out uh, no sorry friday night today's wednesday uh this friday the 19th at eight o'clock on my channel um we are chatting with megan cross a uh, friend of a uh, friend of mine a friend of the channel who is a game developer herself um a fantastic player great gm 
who is going to be talking to us about the importance of forming bonds between player characters, uh, which is something that happened very successfully in this party, and I think you can all see that out there right now. Um, it worked beautifully, and the reason why it worked so well is because of Megan Cross, because I was using her Session Zero game that she made. It's a little deck of cards that gives you prompts. Megan made that, and uh, I used that to help build... Oh, yeah, I have, to have a copy right here. I used that to help build uh, their backstories, all these characters' backstories, build connections between them. It's a, it's a great tool. Get a copy. It's awesome. Uh, and if you want to learn more about it, come check out Megan on Friday at 8 o'clock. Um, uh, and then, yeah, every Wednesday, IGM this game here on Weave the Tale. Um, so thank you, everybody, for watching. Stick around because we're going to do a little raid. We're going to go raid into Fable Forge RPG right after this. Um, so do please stick around. We'll go support our friends over at Fable Forge. But uh, until next week, thank you all so much for watching. It's been a blast. Thank you to the cast for coming along with me on this journey. And uh, next week, we'll see you all in the oblivious depths of the Black Void. Good night, everybody. These are the tales we weave. Tales of magic. Tales of mystery. Tales exploring the beyond. And while we continue to grow, even more adventures await in the depths of the unknown. Will you join us in the telling?